Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. So, good morning, sir. Yes, very good morning. Sankar, Blikit, Vivek Yadav, Vivek Dakar, and Subhuji. So, I want to understand a few things first. Uh, how much have you been studying and practicing on your own? Like, what are you doing? Are you solving sums, going through the theories, going through the notes that I've shared, going through your textbook notes, going through RK Bali or Oxford textbooks? So, Bhaji, let's start with you. In instruments and uh, radio, I have done with what we have discussed in class till only that point. And in general navigation, I've covered basically all the chapters. Uh, and I think I need more practice on the numerical part, specifically the CX3 questions. CX3 questions. So, yeah. Those questions are basically, if you'll remember, I had sent you a big assignment to solve many different types of questions, tables. There were different tables. Okay. What else, Ubojit? If how much are you done? Like what how many things are you confident about? General navigation, I'm uh, confident about 80-85%. Then from instruments, instruments and radio, the points which we have discussed in class, I'm confident about all those points. Good, good. See, so those points are your major chunk of your instruments. A data instruments and those questions based upon uh, DR navigation and your RBI or your QDM, QDR, a little bit that we have solved. So good, that should be, you know, that those topics should be thorough. That is very important. A data instruments, especially. There's so many points that we can get confused with. So we need to make sure that our understanding about what goes where, what is the pressure dynamics between all the different sensing elements, what underreads, what overreads, altimeter calculations, those questions, those are very critical points. We need to make sure that those are our strong points. So priority, students, this for everyone, priority has to be given to these topics that we have covered, like general navigation, of course, in-flight navigation, one by 60 rule, ROD, those are scoring points. Similarly, A data instruments is scoring because you have numericals and theory both. RMI, RBI sums so far that you have done, chances of those sums coming are more. The only thing that we have to do is connect those sums with how we read the instrument. Okay. And looking at the dial of the instrument, trying to solve a few questions. And then definitely a few points. We will discuss about the theory, about what is the principle, what are the frequencies. So Apart from that, in instrumentation for Subhajit and for Sankal, I think Gyro, we, you have not been introduced with Gyro. So we will have one quick session for Gyro in which I'll explain all important points with respect to what, what comes. And apart from that, in instruments, um, a few points about direct reading compass, although it's a, not a part of CPL, but we will discuss those points as to what happens to uh, the compass. And we will talk about the mechanism of the compass where key points are related to liquid swirl and what is the importance of the dampening fluid in a basic DR compass. That's a direct reading compass. Any normal compass is not just a magnetic needle, but it also has certain liquids. So why do we have those liquids? So it's like a one hour session that we'll go through for that. So gyro and DR compass will be covering in one, uh, I think, what do we say? In like one flow, okay? So I think that gyro and DR compass probably will cover day after tomorrow. Today is what, 22, right? Today we are going to talk about charts and projections, all important points, okay? Um, 
it's very simple although in the textbook especially in oxford and even in bali you will see the material is very lengthy but when you carefully look at the syllabus that we have and the points that we need to know it's very simple so today after this initial strategy for this week that i'm going to discuss with you all after that we'll be starting with charts and projections and it will be easy and there are many key points in that like certain calculations also but it's going to be easy apart from charts and projections gyro and br compass why i'm saying we'll do it on 24th is because tomorrow we can focus on our radio navigation equipments so that we can you know get more time later on to practice them so tomorrow i'm thinking students that let meet uh, an hour early if possible so today is 11 tomorrow let's meet at 10 o'clock and uh, tomorrow we will be doing all uh, vor dme initially we'll discuss with theory and then basic theory key points and hour or so we'll spend in theory we'll not dwell too much in depth that much we will keep for later for your knowledge now we'll focus only on the keep of course we'll talk about everything but we'll focus on key points that are uh exam oriented important we'll talk only and discuss about those points which are basically your basic points which are we, we can talk about like first 50% of your topic will be studying the next 50% it is okay because there's nothing much everything is basic we'll be just doing it quick 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 but nicely so rmi rbi trying to read the instrument you can you might take some time so we need around an hour extra for you to get used to understanding how the instrument looks like but it's very easy once you get a hang of it it's very easy you solve like for 20 30 minutes afterwards and you'll become proficient so vr dme i am putting for tomorrow vr dme and adf dial sums i'm talking i'm i'm mentioning dial plus a little bit of theory so this dial related sums trying to read the instrument and then try to solve sometimes there are two pointers in an rbi so relative bearing one relative bearing two All, although you have been taught this so that that level of understanding that we have done is going to make it much more easier for us to get through this um i hope everybody is making a list not just subojit okay because we all are aligned vivek i think i think for you all topics are covered vivek i think you will tell me which topics are not covered for you this is uh, your discretion uh, vivek if you are joining these sessions it will be a good revision for you right otherwise if you are thorough with these points that i'm mentioning now then you can skip attending vivek if you have to solve your own thing up to you so we are dme okay, adf sir. dial and sums tomorrow we are going to completely dedicate it to those points after that 24th what i'm thinking is um 24th we will talk about gyro and after gyro dr compass okay and this is done now sankal we were talking about macmeter so actually macmeter is not for cpl only one point is there which is vmo explanation of what is vmo as in we speed it specifically mentioned so even if we don't do mac meter but we understand what vmo is that much is enough so maybe they are asking us not to learn about the theory but to make sure if if necessity comes then are you able to read the mac meter if it's installed in your etra are you able to read the max limit because you are required to focus only on your asi that's why they have not given it to you because your training aircrafts and these aircrafts they don't go to speed of sound but still maybe that's why they have not given it to us so maybe mac meter couple of points we will include after gyro and dr compass okay after that there are a few topics on radio which we should cover topics like radio altimeter instrument landing system radar gps and a little bit of basic point about antennas now again students we will not be having our liberty of you know spending 4 to 5 hours on every topic but it's okay we will be focusing on all key points explanations will be there definitely you will understand but we call it quick prep because we just focus on essential points and your understanding and once you say sir i have understood let's go ahead then we'll move ahead like that 
that's why the batch is only of selective people only for whom we have to have exams though likhit and vivek are attending ex extra because they also want to rush to give the exam whenever their computer number comes but the priority is with you three guys only so these sessions are only for you three and uh, so you keep asking keep learning fast easy slow there's nobody else to you know dis disturb you all to understand and you know in uh, 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 take consume more time so you can mark 25th february to have so 24th is gyro dia compass mac meter 25th will be doing radio altimeter radar ils gps and antennas okay now i don't want to take entire day of your time with me although i want to teach you a few things because then you need to learn these things and keep going ahead with your own preparation um i'm not sure but many students use keith william question bank to solve general navigation questions i remember i was just checking my email today history to see if i had shared any notes which i could share with you on a quick prep notes that's where i found out keith william textbook so you guys can just take your nav computers and uh, uh just randomly see the topics through the textbook and uh, randomly keep addressing a few questions and see if you can solve them initially you might not understand but after a few some trial and error checking the answer key i'm sure you'll get a hang of it so you can do that um i'll be sending you all that book okay it's for general navigation so you all can practice now this one week don't get super exhausted that you don't remember anything in the exams but give as much as time you can simple as that no videos no youtube no time pass nothing just focus whatever free time you have keep reading that's my one suggestion 2 hours 1 hour like that so i will email you this book see if you can solve a few questions so 26th and 27th we will have buffer in case we are not able to cover couple of topics in any one of the session we will be able to cover on 26th okay so this this plan is up to let's say 26th or 27th okay and we'll try to keep your lectures early in the morning so that you have rest of the day and i'll not be focusing on evening lectures for you not only entirely afternoon also early morning fresh we'll learn so that whenever we are tired or exhausted in case i am stretching we can wrap up any time you can take a break have lunch take a nap and get back to studying again till the evening or night and uh, subhoji your questions from previous are still pending so i am going to get on to them and i'll give you the solution so that tomorrow when we are discussing a similar topic we are dme we can solve those also so make sure nothing is unsolved as much as you have covered students this is your one responsibility to keep an overview as much as we have covered do you know it thoroughly or not if you know it thoroughly you will pass even if we don't go ahead with i would say if we even if we don't go ahead with these more topics you can easily score 60 to 70 trust me on this but we will not do that we will obviously cover everything so your chances should be that definitely you should score 80 85 or 90 keep practicing and please don't stress out okay it's just an exam it's a gk exam for you think it like that Na general knowledge on navigation that's what gk is all about okay so subhojit any more points you want to add please tell me then we'll talk to vivek and sankal and then we'll go ahead with the session today sir uh, what about inertial navigation is it in the syllabus um ins actually is not majorly a part of the syllabus but i think couple of points should be it's good if we introduce the basic principles it's a very complicated uh, system and it is only a part of your like pressurized aircrafts you know not many light aircrafts have that system so i'll i'm keeping it in option irs and ins i'll give you a few points on that also i'll tell you where and which schedule maybe a few reading points or maybe a half an hour explanation and then reading points on that okay 
what else? Subhajit, anything else you want to add? No, sir. From my side, I'm just all explained all the doubts. Okay, okay fine. Good. Vivek you go ahead. Sir, I am done with journal navigation and confident about journal navigation and care data instruments. And I think I need a revision for gyroscope and a few topics of radio navigation and numericals. Okay, so, okay, carry on. RMI, UDF, no. Say again, RMI. RMI, EDF. Uh -huh. That's it, sir. Okay, so you just need to revise, you are saying. You just need to revise. Any topics yeah. that you want us to cover in the class specifically? No, sir. Okay. Students, uh, I hope you'll remember performance, your lecture on performance, critical points, important points, performance is vast, hugely vast. The points that we have covered are basic points, important basic points. Okay. I hope you'll remember your flight plan also. I will try to give you a little extra important points about what are repetitive flight plans, adherence to flight plans and all. Okay, so that you can take a quick look. Um, Vivek, in our practice sessions, like in, in classes when I've given you certain questions with everybody else, like proper batches that we have had, initially I've seen you making a few mistakes in the sums that you have already done well before. And in the couple of tests that I have given earlier, I have seen you perform well earlier and, and get lesser marks in these tests. And I remember when I spoke to you, you said that, sir, I was just trying, I was just checking, but I'm not confused. I'm I'm well versed about it. So what's the status like? I, I'm, I'm a little worried about it, that what your performance was, we need to get a little more than that, not lower than that. So we need to make sure that, you know, what you think you know and what you know both are correct. It should not be like you think you know, but what you know is somewhere uh, we are missing like 1920 to be say in Hindi, right? That should not happen because we even, we need, we don't need 69, but we are very happy with 70. That's what it means. Okay. We are not happy with 69. Of course, I will like a score of 69 if anybody scores. I'm like, very good. Next attempt, try for one more mark. But no, we have to focus on 70 or above. So, what's the status on that? Uh, sir, I had tried to give test uh, without any revision. I was just checking how much I remember. That's why I scored less than earlier. So, that way you didn't score bad. That way it was good. It was hardly one or two marks difference I saw. So, I was worried about those two marks actually. Like, you got them right earlier while you are getting those wrong. But then there are more marks, more questions which you had got wrong earlier and wrong now. So that is also something that we need to make sure that we are not confused. Okay. Rogers. So basic radio wave theory, radio wave propagation. I hope you guys are thorough with those points. I, I hope we have covered. Maybe in RT sessions, maybe other sessions. What are the different types of propagation, frequency, wavelength? Correct those things. Um, I think factors of affecting propagation, absorption, refraction. I think I need to give you notes on that. Uh, just right on the safe side. Factors affecting propagation. We can write. And there's one more. Electronic displays a few notes on that if possible. 
Talking about IRS and INS, right? Lail gyro, ring laser gyro, national navigation system. Hmm. Uh -huh. It's not mentioned specifically. Only ring laser gyro is there, which is which is like a digital version of a gyroscope. So, and his iris is not there. Good. What else, students? Sankal, go ahead. So I think I'm done with performance all the chapters uh, then in general navigation i'm left with this marketer charts apart from that i did everything with this and scale scale also i didn't do uh, under the uh, radio navigation uh, the radar theory only j just the radar theory i, I did uh, this dme ssr and everything else uh, then uh, under the instruments uh, only with the IRS, and I get confused in ultimate questions. And yeah, uh, we need to sort uh, we need to sort that confusion out. You need to discuss those with me, Sankal. Uh, what are the confusions there? Make sure you discuss those with me. Continue. Sorry to interrupt. Continue. Uh, so, so only that much, I guess. And uh, IRS, INS, I did. National uh, hmm. navigation system. Initial INS and IRS, I don't think you see. I would not say questions. I won't say that questions will never come in the exam. They can come, but I doubt these questions would come. But uh, it is very important that you know. Uh, so, flight planning, I guess. What about flight planning, Sankar? So, uh, flight planning, I don't know what to study exactly in there. Uh, Sankar, have you gone through flight plan? We have done flight plan, I think, with RD no, lectures. Yes, sir. I have gone through the flight plan, not that, sir. Flight planning, no. like we have to calculate the distance and the fuel and all. No, we... So that those those questions, partially, you have been given those questions in your journal navigation. Distance, speed, time, basically, that is how it is. Okay. Then analyzing the wind and calculating what would be your heading with respect to your required track. And what would say wind component and wind speed. It is just that only few things that you have to add in that is how much is the distance, what's your fuel consumption, and how much will be your fuel. So that calculation is actually in your PNR sums that we have done. Fuel consumption formula, if you remember. In, yes. in, in flight planning, the theory uh, a little bit theory is important to be given to you. Like what are the uh, validity of a flight plan who's responsibly the uh, responsibility it is but when it comes to flight planning it is like you study the path you study the charts and you check out the route as per the weather conditions get the wind vectors and then estimate your speed your distance time altitude all those so there is a big table in your journal navigation questions that is a combination of all different tables like your cdmvt then your in-flight navigation and then in the end you have fc and fob okay so good and combine table continue sankal so that's it sir good that you have gone through a few more topics through the textbook good how about gps antenna Yes, uh, GPS, I've studied uh, only the control user and uh, the, those segments under the GPS. And uh, so I've gone through the notes, uh, not through the book Oxford and uh, Oxford videos. Okay, fine. Good. All right. Any other requests? Think about it. Go through everything that you have.
Sankalp, Vivek Dakar, anything. Suboji. Sir, I think uh, those uh, instrument re reading problems like uh, RMI and all. So you said you will cover, right? Yeah, that, that we will cover. Nice. It's easy. I want you all to cover it with me only. So that uh, under that horizontal situation indicator. Yeah, yeah, all that. It's easy. You need uh, you need to know how to start those things. Then uh, if, if you will remember how to start reading at those points, then your job becomes easier. It's there. We'll be doing those points tomorrow. So uh, what else? Think, students. Sir, is electronic displays are part of CPL? Uh, sometimes a couple of questions come from this. Like I remember in the past, a few students coming after the exam, they said, sir, I had a couple of questions come from electronic flight instrumentation also. But those are only color codes. Those I will give you important points about those codes. Okay. I have written it down. So I'll draft a document which makes it easy for you all to read it. What about relative motion? Is it there for exams? Say again. So relative motion. Relative motion? With respect to? Uh, so uh, I think I've uh, seen some of the problems wherein we have to uh, calculate like if I'm traveling at, for example, uh, if I'm traveling at 140 knots and the other aircraft is traveling at 160 knot that how much time will it take to overtake the other aircraft and all those type of sums uh which chapter have you seen these sums uh so relative motion i was uh, going through one book uh of one student i don't remember his name but uh, i have that book the notes see send send me the picture if you can for those questions now that is basically, I think such questions are very basic questions. Um, basic as in, how do I say, uh, like speed, distance, time. And sometimes when two objects are moving, or maybe one object is moving and transmitting, there is something known as a Doppler effect. Chances are that we have to include the Doppler effect also. Now what is Doppler effect if you're thinking? Like Doppler VR is also there. Uh, in your, uh, what do we say, in your syllabus as mentioned, Doppler principle is something to do with when an aircraft is moving and let's say there is this ground station over here in the bottom of the screen. So this aircraft is sending a signal and receiving a signal to understand whatever the ground station is sending or receiving any signal. So when the aircraft is moving, it has certain velocity and it has its position at which it sends the data. By the time it receives the data, its position has changed. And again, when its position has changed, they are sending the signal again to the station. Now the signal reaches faster to the station compared to the earlier position. Because of this difference between this motion and this position, there is a shift in the frequency at which the transmissions are made. That's known as Doppler shift. Now, those things like it's like when I say it's general, it means everything can be explained if you know what the principles are. So with respect to now what is Doppler shift, how to put that Doppler shift, where does Doppler affect? Doppler can affect everywhere, but mostly it affects wherever the aircraft is close to a ground station and moving, especially when going to a station. But I don't think this relative motion sums, they require Doppler. I think it's just with respect to the observer, what is the speed distance time? You calculate it two ways and you check the midpoint. Midpoint as in, if there are two, then check when will they reach this point? Or if there are two going in the same direction, again, your speed, your distance, their speed, their distance, and you will see how much time will it take for you to reach them. That will be your overtaking speed. So I would want to see what kind of questions are these. If 
I don't think they are there mentioned, but if we have time, I'll give you a couple of solutions. It's easy. It's like, it's a physics, basically it's a physics question we could say. Think about it, what else? Relate to motion, right? So what about entries? We are holding entries. Offset, teardrop and up, direct entry. It's not there anywhere mentioned. So we sometimes do take when we have extra time, we teach holding patterns, but questions don't come from holding patterns. One degree, two degree. So in case we have extra time, we can discuss these points. Otherwise, it's not compulsory. Holding patterns. For your IR, um, for even your IR training also, when you'll go for a flight training, holding will not be taught to you as much as it should be taught to you. What else? Think about it. Chupujit, Vivek, Sankal. I'm making a note of everything. Don't worry, students. Weight and balance, have we practiced more sums? Subhajit, Sankal, you have textbooks, right? Have you solved? Getting answers? Today answer? morning, I just solved a question and I got the answers. Just one question I solved. Good. Good. You, sh you, uh, you have notes. I, I knew you all have notes, so I didn't worry about sending you all notes. But I should have instructed you all to solve. I had instructed, I had not just given. Solve, see if you are stuck somewhere, at least solve 10 different questions, similar but different. Pick up those questions. Solve. Try to find a shortcut. Important is whether you remember all the maximum traffic load formulas. That is something that has to come from your memory in the exam. If you confuse there, then that will be a problem. M MSTOM also, there are two formulas for takeoff mass. Uh, what are those two formulas? If MSTOM is not given to you. And remember to compare with the lowest of the three maximums. Okay. So remember because five to seven marks, we can get easily on that. Do solve those sums today. Pick up questions from Bali, not Bali, from your Oxford. And in case you don't have it, tell me, I'll share it with you. Let me just email you the Keith Williams the general CX3 questions. This, this huge, uh, whatever I'm sending you right now, it's written CRP5. CRP5 is another name for your navigation computer. Don't worry about solving all its 130 pages. Randomly pick, see what you get, what you don't get. What you're not getting, check, share with me. You move on to the next one, just keep marking on it. Okay. Just a second, I'll email it to you right away. And Likit and Vivek Yadav, I hope you're following, guys. It doesn't mean I you cannot so. talk or discuss. Just make the most of it. And remember these points so that during your exams, you have to take less efforts. Vivek Yadav, Vivek Thakur, Subhuji. Anything else? Nothing, right? If you can practice these CX3 sums, and if your CX3 usage is good, then with the knowledge that you already have students, you'll pass. 
make sure you don't miss that point. It's not necessary these questions, it's just for practice. Some I I personally not checked all the questions, but these are like reputed questions that people solve, 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 solve. But it's good for practice for us. It's one place. These are only based upon CX3 students. So just first things first, I've sent you the email when you get the doc. Uh, scan the whole doc and check all pages, like an overview and see if it's given topic wise. If yes, do you know how to solve them? Overview quickly, quickly, whether you remember or not. Whatever you don't remember, if you're using digital, write the page number. Once you have taken the whole overview, then you come back to that that you have not solved and see whether you can figure it out on CX3 or not. Simple. First thing first. And then you will share those questions with me if you don't get an answer to those. And then after those are addressed, okay, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 20 at a time. You don't have to take it. Uh, take the chunk completely out in one go. And then you give those questions to me if you cannot solve, cannot do R&D, and then you solve your normal questions. Just put yourself to test and see if you're getting the answers or not. Okay? With your CX3. So, Bojit, you had to solve practice CX3. It's coming at the right time for you. Okay. Vedit uh, Dhakar's uncle, of course, Likhit and Vivek Yadav also. Do this today. Keith Williams CX3 practice. Every now and then keep practicing, practicing. Try to target 100 questions every every day from that. It's easy, just CX3. You don't have to memorize, don't have to do, just CX3. It's the laziest numericals that you can get. Just CX3, simple. Make it fun. Don't worry. Got it, right? It needs nothing else. Just CX3, that's it. Okay, good. Let's take a fall, a small five minute breather. We are going to start with projections. And uh, I'll also teach you a couple of sums on scale. And we will talk about. So I'll just give you a brief before we come back from the breather. Uh, do you remember what is the formula for great circle and rumb line track? Students? What is the formula for GC and RL? If you cannot remember, go through your notes. It's okay. Yes, Sankal, I need to tell me the I need you to tell me the formula. It's, it's giving me heads up good. But so Vivek Dhakar, Suboji, sorry to take you all by surprise, but please. So D long into 60 for great circle and for Ramland D long into 60 into cos. Circle carefully, carefully. Which formula are you giving me? A great circle, sir, first. Uh -huh. D long into a 60. D long into 60, that's it. Uh, for great circle. Okay. And, and for Ramland? Uh, for Ramland, sir, D long into 60 into cos light. And convergence? Uh, D long into sine of mean leg. And what about that, students? Uh, what is that formula where we take 60 nautical miles? What formula is that? Where we take answer in feet, I guess. What, what is There's one formula, right? What is it? Great circle? Departure? What formula is that? Departure, I think, uh, where we multiply that D long by 60 and Further by cos of flat. Yes. Yeah, what is that? Departure? Vivek Dhaka? Yes, sir. Departure or run yes. line distance. Meridian spacing. Departure is D long in minutes. That is one thing that we need to remember. Into cos theta. Correct? So... Depending upon different charts, whether your chart shows convergence or doesn't show convergence, these aspects will change. So what you already know, departure, convergency, great circle, these common points will be there in all different types of charts. There are certain charts that will give you uh, accurate reading of the equator. There are certain charts that will give you accurate reading of 45 degree north south, and certain charts that will give you accurate reading of polar regions. But there is not one chart that can give you all three accurate 
uh, values. So we choose a few charts that have certain compromises. So with respect to these charts, you will be asked, how will you solve your rate circle? How will you solve your departure? How will you solve your conversions? Those are key points, that's it. The one that we have learned can be considered to be similar to what we will see on Mercator. So what, what is Mercator and what are the other charts? Today it's all going to be simplified. You'll be learning it in a very simple and sophisticated manner, okay? It's nothing that you have not studied, but yeah, that, remember in our solutions, we were talking about not inclining the line and straight lines, calling it Mercator. So the formulas that we are following are actually part of your projections, we can say. So we'll compare if the formulas are same or not, okay? But before we will talk about what is projection, what is orthomorphism that is important as a basic concept. Otherwise, it would be like, oh, you have done CPL, you don't know what is uh, conformity. What is conformity? So we'll talk about all that. Let's take a short breather. And uh, I hope if you come across anything else that you want me to cover up for you, Please let me know. Make sure you're good with magnetism, earth magnetism, vertical magnetism, horizontal magnetism, the formulas, dip angle, okay? Horizontal and vertical magnetism, directive force, those points, CDMVT, highly scoring, convergency and all. Or, fine. Let's take a quick breather and come back. Uh, let's come back at 11.55. Let's take 5-10 minutes and then come back.
Okay, welcome back. Sankal, Likit, Vivek Yadav, are you there? Confirm, sir. Confirm, sir. Okay, so what is projection? Now, projection is like projecting something on something. When you go to a movie theater, they project the movie theater on a big screen. What does it mean? It means that they have films, the films are very small. And that small film is magnified on your large screen, which we view. So that is basic projection. Um, when you go to get your documents Xerox, your document copies are also projected on a new paper, a blank paper, and you can increase or decrease the size of the same. What does it mean? It means that anything can be projected and the scale can be magnified or diminished on a different screen, on a different surface. For this projection, you definitely need a light source. Without the light source, projection cannot happen. Okay. So what does it mean? It means that if I want to, you know, project the outline of my bike or a car on a paper, can I do it? Possibly I can, if I know how to do it, but it can be done. Why would I need to do that? I already have a blueprint of my bike and a car. Why would I need to do that? I would more need to do that. So such protocols are not in place. Then why would I need to do it? I would need to do it for those uh, elements which don't have a blueprint. That is earth. Earth doesn't have a blueprint. Earth doesn't have any charts. We all live on the planet, but nature doesn't give us anything to map it we have to map it on our own and how do we map it there are the most easiest way today is to take jet, uh, take satellite pictures like google maps and there are so many other satellites that are mapping the earth now if you go as per google maps then yes uh, we can actually see the whole planet on google earth and we can zoom in zoom in zoom in and we can see uh, all the different places but is it accurate and is this how charts are made you know satellites and all their modern inventions charts have been made long before that earlier charts were made by land surveys people used to survey different regions and cartographers we call them who makes charts they used to survey and they they used to print what they have surveyed with their insight and their imagination on a piece of paper and they called it charts. How can I actually convert my whole globe that earth is an oblate spheroid? How can I convert the oblate spheroid into a piece of paper which I can use for my references? What references do I need? I need a physical reference to help me travel on my globe. Now this globe over here, how will I put it on a paper? That is very important because I need to carry that paper. I need to track my flight. I need to navigate. I need to make sure that I have a chart. So what they do is whoever is in charge of this, like we can say WGS 84, the society with which uh, we, you know, follow the form of the earth, shape of the earth. Similarly, there are societies and institutes that take care of, you know, creating your charts. But how are these charts made? So firstly, to make a chart, you need earth. And that earth you will project on a piece of paper somewhere. But can we create a paper to actually project everything that we have on a planet? it is not practically possible to have this entire earth projected. So what do we do? We first make a reduced earth, a small earth like this globe. 
okay yes. and we give it a size whether the size is 10000 times smaller than the actual earth or 50000 times smaller than the actual earth or 1000 times smaller than the actual earth and this earth is called as reduced earth so this is a reduced earth this reduced earth would be constructed with respect to what wgs 84 has adopted and the size of this reduced earth could be big it could be as big as a room or it could be as small as this depending upon what they have manufactured and what is the ratio so this ratio is something that you will see quite often and this ratio will describe what is the length on the actual earth and what is the length of the reduced earth generally you will see the ratios could be 1 by 50000 it means one unit of distance on this reduced earth if it is 1 km then on actual earth it is 50000 km so that is the reduction of reduced earth this much point this is very important for us to have after this is had we open this structure we put a light source inside the structure and we illuminate the light source when we illuminate the light source the light radiates all sides and these the surface of the reduced earth it is not you know it is transparent we could say wherever it is transparent light will pass wherever it is not transparent we will be seeing these geographical features on anywhere that we need to project now this projection or as per my choice i can either keep a flat piece of paper here i can either keep a flat piece of paper here or i can keep either a flat piece of paper here that's it these are three types of projections for you this one is the most uh, widely used because this one where we keep the paper like this to the reserve uh, reduced earth gives us accurate equator related data and equator around 23 we can say close to the equator the accuracy is good this one is good for mid latitudes this one is good for polar latitudes so what is this this type of uh, projection has a name this type of projection has a name this type of projection has a name these are paper simple so we keep a paper here and we get the projection on that paper we keep uh, we unfold the paper make it open and we got a chart that's how they do it okay so we will be seeing these things i'm going to give you a few important points and we are going to discuss and then we are going to talk about what is reduced earth and then what is scale scale is similar to this only the ratio how much scale all stations can you hear me Sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So scale and the ratio of reduced earth is similar. On every chart, a small chart like this will have entire India stated. But is India this small? No. So the scale will represent how much. If one centimeter on this chart, how much does one centimeter represent on the actual earth or the actual? india so if i see 1 cm is connecting mumbai to pune on a small chart then the ratio would be that 1 cm equals to maybe around 500 km or 300 km because that's the actual distance this is scale so the smaller will always be numerator and the bigger will be denominator so we are going to discuss these points and this scale when reduced to whole numbers has a name that name we will talk about okay so please write down the first point about projections right now pilots often need pilots often need to develop and maintain
you will need okay pilots always uh, often have the need to develop and maintain visual navigation skills using the help of charts maps compass stopwatch eye and brain you remember students five of these elements are your basic instruments for a navigator with the help of maps charts compass stopwatch eye and brain so please repeat those five things maps there are more than five maps oblique charts compass stopwatch eye and brain with reference to charts right next point with reference to charts understanding the legend of aeronautical charts becomes very important understanding the legend of navigation charts or aeronautical charts becomes very important So can you repeat the points once again? Sankal, please give a read back. Uh, so understanding the so what is that word? Understanding. Give a target, please give a read back. With reference to charts, understanding the the legend of aeronautical charts. become very important so would you give a read back in reference to charts understanding the legend of aeronautical charts become very important with reference to these charts like we are mentioning in the first point understanding the legend legend is the small key in the corner of all charts explaining the features of your charts that is legend like in rt charts we see what represents ats route what represents control boundaries similarly it is very important that the pilot is aware what are the elements of the chart they are represented in your legend legend is that small table in one of the corners of your chart so charts maps compass stopwatch these are your five basic instruments your eye and your brain we have understood cdmvt stopwatch we know i brain we know how to use it's the only thing that is left that is charts one of the most important points okay legend of aeronautical charts students is important for the pilot because it explains what is what okay now these aeronautical charts are of three types students if anybody ever asks aeronautical charts are of three types one is relief relief charts will show you what kind of terrain you are flying on there are charts that will show you other features and then there are charts that will show you scale these scale charts are very uh we can say important and similar to these relief charts are also very important but there is a skill to understanding charts you know like you understand looking at this 2d diagram what 3d world is like okay relief charts okay these relief charts 
they have a specific property. Write down the property is known as contours. C O N T O U R S contours. Now, what is this contours or contours? These contours are lines joining all places. which are at same elevation point. What is elevation, students? Elevation, remember altimeter, height of a ground surface or vertical distance of a ground surface above the sea level, that is elevation. So mountains will have a higher elevation, your plains and plateaus will have a lower elevation comparatively. So you need to know if on the chart, if there are certain lines that will denote similar elevation and if you know what the elevation is you will avoid that part to be flown or you will choose that part to be flown depending upon whether it's a higher elevation or a lower elevation can it be an obstruction or an obstacle to you which are at same elevation above mean sea level okay sometimes if this is a mountain the basic, most basic understanding, okay, if this is the mountain, okay, so in this mountain students, this much part, let's say, has an elevation of 100 feet, okay, let's say this much part has an elevation of 200 feet, let's say this much part has an elevation of 300 feet, and let's say the peak is at 400 feet. A small mountain, okay, comparatively. So on your chart, you cannot get a horizontal view, although Google Maps, they all give you horizontal views, street views, but we use it only as a second reference if we need to use them. Still, we use these things. Sankal, they were asking if these are accurate. Yes, these are accurate because all systems and everything, they are both, the whole system is based upon these things. These are part of our systems. So how would it look like on your chart? On your chart, it would look like this. Like this, four heights, four lines. Lower line, this whole line will show you 100 feet. This line will show you 200 feet. This line will show you 300 feet and this line will show you 400 feet on your chart. So probably if your altitude is 200 feet, then although it's risky, but it is safe if you're flying this part or it is safe even if you are taking this because you're only crossing the 100 feet elevation. If in case you take this, then you're going to collide in the mountain, that is CFIT, right there, control flight in terrain field. So this is not happening for me. These are basic contours or counters that you will talk about. This is how it will be represented on the chart. We can consider this to be a circular mountain like this. Okay, now not all mountains would be like this. So do you understand what is con what are contours? Sankar, Subhajit, Vivek, yes, no. Okay, good. So your relief charts are called as terrain charts also. Remember, they have a lot of key elements, but very important for beginners to know is your contours. Please check if your contours are, check if contours are in feet or meters, always remember, okay, now those lines or contours, because there are different heights mentioning what is steep and so there are, if, if there are many lines and if contours are close, to each other and are closely spaced. 
if on a chart you see couple of counters very close to each other okay they represent a steep slope the slope is too steep that's why the lines are packed close to each other not a safe area for you to fly definitely not a safe a steep slope or a steeply sloping ground I will write counters that are widely spaced it's opposite indicate gently sloped ground simple right now there will be different types of color coding also in certain charts those color codings can also show you different elevation maps okay but with respect to counters we can say these are important points that sometimes are asked in your charts now what about projection now what is projection i'm going to show you a few pictures from the textbook itself oxford okay let's let me pull up the screen Okay. Look at this now. Can everybody see it? What is it? It's a reduced earth. Okay, you can see the equator, right? And see on this chart, or for this type of projection, a light source is held above. The reduced earth is here, and the projection is copied on a flat paper like this. And if you carefully look, equator and a point on equator Quebec, and a point on equator Alpha is referenced. Okay, and those points are traced here. Quebec and Alpha. So your this is your equator, which means this is your maximum diameter which you can see. Then what about this inner circle? Where did I get this inner circle? This inner circle is actually a reflection or projection of Bravo, and Bravo was somewhere a lower altitude in the southern hemisphere, a lower latitude in the southern hemisphere. So it is in the inside. So practically, if I'm trying to take this projection, then I think this projection would be showing me South Pole, equator to South Pole, Southern Hemisphere. So the light is taken from the Northern Hemisphere, but my projection is coming for the equator and the Southern Hemisphere. So for this part, I will only be getting only the Southern Hemisphere on the chart, and the accuracy would be a point of concern over there. What is more close to the actual deal? What kind of projection is this? If you are wondering, it's called azimuthal projection. So, with respect to projection, there are three types of projection. Okay? Three general type of projections.
So write down projection before we take the definition, we'll write down types. Three general types, although there are five documented projections that are of reference to us, there are three general types. Number one is azimuthal. This azimuthal projection is also called as plane projection. Number two is cylindrical. And number three is conical. Before we get into, now, now you can visualize what is azimuthal, right? Before we get into it, uh, we need to talk about types of charts. Okay. Now, the charts instead of talking about relief terrain or other features of scale there are two charts or two basic descriptions one of which is very important to us one is called perspective chart and one is called non perspective charts now what is perspective and non perspective interesting Perception, we know something with which we view, something with which we observe things, look at things. The perspective charts you will write down, they are directly produced from a projection. So perspective charts are directly produced from a projection. So what we are learning about is perspective charts only. Okay, so if you ever come across azimuthal perspective, don't be worried about what is azimuthal perspective. It is just the basic azimuthal chart from a projection. Whereas non-perspective charts are produced by mathematical methods. So it's your logarithms, calculations, trigonometry, and everything combined. Your perspective charts are also known as, so coming back to the first point, perspective charts are also known as geometric charts. And you will be surprised to know that most of the charts, you will write it below non-perspective non charts, most of the charts are non-perspective but can be understood as perspective charts with mathematical modifications. So a combination of two can give us a better chart. Okay. What is reduced earth? What is reduced earth? Reduced earth, it is a scale model. The moment you say scale model, it means the relative dimensions are accurate. It means if in real earth, if the ratio of India landmass and the total landmass, let's say if the ratio is 2 by 10, or let's say the ratio is 2 by 20, which would be 1 by 10, then on your reduced earth also, the ratio between India and the whole reduced earth will remain the same, that is 1 by 10. That is a scale model, okay? Reduced earth, it is a scale model of earth on which 
the projection of chart is based. Example, to make a scale model of earth, so see, you got the keyword scale here students, why do you think the scale comes, why, Sankal, if you were worrying what is scale, because the reduced earth is a scale model, then the projected chart will also be a scale chart. So we need to know what is the scale to understand what are the dimensions. Because without dimensions, our calculations with speed, distance, time will be inaccurate. So it's not going to serve the purpose of navigation. Simple. So to make a scale model of Earth, with scale, one is to one million. 1 million is 10 lakhs or 1,000,000, 000, synonymous to your mega in your frequencies. To make a scale model of Earth with scale this, it will mean the reduced Earth is, reduced Earth has a keyword RE, it means the reduced Earth is a, is of 1 million of size of actual earth. If you go online or any store to buy a model of an airplane to study or just to keep it on your desk or to give someone, you'll always see scale models are very expensive. Stands true for cars and everything else. Everything can be made into a scale model. Why are they expensive? It's because they actually follow the actual uh, actual blueprint of that product. They just reduce the size from feet and meters to small mm and centimeters. That's it. And then they manufacture it. The manufacturing process is expensive. This looks like a scale model, but this is not. We can say this is a ripoff of a scale model, this one. Because scale models are built with metal, not with plastic. Okay. They break, it's hard to fix them back. So we don't use them in the class. Okay. Now coming back to types of projection. Azimuthal projection, or a plane projection, cylindrical and conical. We're going to write one one point each and we're going to simultaneously see the diagrams as to how the projection looks like. Write, up, write about azimuthal projection now. Also known as plane projection, remember? We'll write it is produced by placing a flat sheet of paper. against a point, highlight a point on earth, any point. You can keep this flat paper at any point of your reduced earth, okay? What are the common uses of azimuthal projection? Number one, provides charts of the north or the southern polar region. I want you all to study while going through the class, okay, so that you don't have to keep it for later. So have, have that intent. Understanding is enough. The theory come, you will be able to mark the answers. Such charts 
result into what we call as polar stereographic charts. So your polar stereographic charts, they will show you more accuracy over the poles, okay? And those are basically your plane projection or azimuthal projection only. Remember this point, azimuthal plane, polar stereographic. You saw, you understood where the, the plane paper can be kept at any point on the earth. We prefer to keep it on the North Pole and the South Pole. I can have that accuracy for any point, any latitude, for your uh, graticule also students. Okay, not just the points. So surrounding areas of that particular point will be more accurate than the far away areas. Remember that. Next point. Uh, not next point. Another type, I'm going to give you a couple of points, then we're going to look at pictures. What is cylindrical projection? Now, students, in this, you don't use a flat sheet of paper. Why are we calling azimuthal? Because azimuth can be considered to be something that is plain. That's why we call it plain because the paper is flat. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about cylindrical projections, the paper is not flat. Remember, otherwise you will always be confused thinking azimuthal is giving you your equatorial properties and you will confuse the azimuthal with your market in future. So the keywords are uh, azimuthal plain paper, cylindrical projections, you fold the paper to make a cylinder. I'm going to show you just a minute. So when it comes to azimuthal projection, my paper was like this. I've taken my reduced earth, okay, on the paper and I am doing it. What do we say? I'm taking the projection away. So I've got my reduced earth. I keep it like this. This is azimuthal projection, exactly like this. Any point, I can take it for any point. Mostly it is done for the poles, South Pole and the North Pole. When it comes to cylindrical, projections, you fold the paper on which you need the projection and you turn it into a cylinder like this. This is cylinder. Okay. And this cylinder, you can wrap around your earth in any position like this. You see like this. Now the paper is short for this earth. We will be taking a complete paper like this and then we'll be doing the projection. And the paper that you will get, the chart would look like a flat chart showing you all the projections. This is cylindrical projection. We'll write a couple of points about cylindrical projection. And then we are going to see the pictures from the textbook. You will be surprised that your cylindrical projections are your Mercator projections. Why? Because the inventor, it was one of the first projections students, and it was done in the 16th century. And Mercator was his adopted name. It wasn't his real name. Okay. Write down. Cylindrical projections use cylinders of paper Cylindrical projections use cylinders of paper wrapped around the reduced earth and touching the reduced earth at equator, remember. 
they are named after the inventor i'm just giving it for your reference whose adopted name was marketer thus marketer charts are cylindrical projections students with respect to these different formulas why do we have trigonometric formulas because we have triangles why triangles because of convergence a meridians they behave like triangles at the poles but they are parallel at the equator mercator charts will have uh, properties wherein there are no triangles in your projection or the projected chart if there are no triangles then those trigonometric formulas that we were following will change with respect to these charts similarly with respect to different different charts different things are going to happen okay and before i share the picture with you let's write down conical projections easy conical projections we make a uh, we use cylinders or you can say not cylinder cylinders is for our uh, cylindrical projections we use cones of paper over the reduced earth and project the graticule on the cone so they will make a cone out of this paper like this i've got a cone now looks at this cone this cone they will place somewhere anywhere like this on the earth and they will take the projection so on the reduced earth the graticule and everything will be made okay that's how on the chart you will be able to spot the graticule so on your reduced earth with respect to all the geographical features will be made then the then the graticule will be mentioned on the reduced earth okay and the same graticule and everything will come on your chart so these basic three types of projections i am going to show you from the text i'm sure you must have seen it every now and then now in this diagram they have say, said that the graticule of the projection would appear like this look at it. this is your azimuthal projection after coming on a paper this this paper this square of a paper so this is the square and this is the projection that you have got where it we write about the southern hemisphere coming into it yes see antarctica is this australia and southern part of africa south america none of the northern latitudes are there properly this is how your cylindrical projections look like follow the cursor this is your earth light source is inside and this is the whole cylinder of paper when you open up the paper into a flat sheet this is how you get see from 0 degrees till 70 degrees you are getting latitude on one paper itself while on this paper you only got equator and maybe you got up to 70 you didn't get 90 degree latitude but it's good for your meridian charting reasons but here make sure you remember cylindrical projections they touch the earth on the equator 
the red line. Here, do you see any convergence here, students? No convergence. Is it accurate? It is not accurate. And the stretch, the stretching of the North America, Asia, Russia, China, it is exaggerated. These lines are not that uh, accurate with relevance to other masses. So there is a sort of what can we say uh, compromise that we are making. See, when the graticule has been projected onto the cylinder, the cylinder is open to produce at a flat sheet of paper. Cartographers then can add the geographic detail. Cartographers are people who are engaged with making these charts. It's a science, cartography. Okay. Conical projections. This is how a cone of the paper is placed. Okay. You see it is covering not the equator but certain other latitude and see these are your meridians and you get different latitudes these are only accurate for your polar regions over here see this is how it looks like when you open the code if you carefully look at it your meridian zero zero same meridian A to B, 30 degrees, 60 degree, 150, 180. This is our anti meridian. And these two lines, A and B, because they have named it zero, they are your prime meridians. So actually, it looks like it's one third or two third of your chart, but it's actually showing the entire earth. So these are east, zero to 30, up to 180, and this is west. It looks opposite to the real deal. The east should be on the right, left should be on the west. What are they talking about here? Why are they highlighted? Why have they highlighted latitude one, latitude two, latitude three, latitude four? I'm just going to read it a little fast. Just make sure you focus on keywords. The graticule is projected on the cone. The cone is then slit along with the meridian, Greenwich meridian. The cone is then developed open. In this case, the chart will show the whole northern hemisphere. The whole northern hemisphere is covered. The user, as in the pilot, will only need to know a small section of the chart. You will not be given these big projections. You will always be given small, small parts. Your Jepson charts are small, small sections of these bigger charts to give you more accuracy. For example, the rectangle is suggested. So this rectangle will be the chart given to you out of this whole projection. In this section of the chart, the graticule will look more familiar. And this is how the graticule will look. Isn't our graticule in the northern hemisphere supposed to look like this, students? Yes, it is supposed to be converging towards the poles. It looks like that. Lambert's conical chart. Mercator's cylindrical projections. And if you have to associate conical charts, then it's with the, another cartographer you can write it with cylindrical projections lambert is the name given to them it is their name actually now quickly i want you all to make note of these points what are the properties of idle charts just make it rough okay the first property is the angles on the earth's surface should be represented by the same angles on the chart quickly write down properties of idle chart the properties are divided in two parts. How the earth surface should be represented and how good are the navigational requirements. With respect to the representation of the earth surface, the angles on the earth should be represented by the same angles on the chart. Remember these points, students. Even if you remember, don't write, you don't have to write the entire statement. You can write in keywords. If you get a theory-based question in exam, you should get it correct. A very important point about the scale, second point. The scale should be constant and correct. If I'm using a scale of one by one million, then everything should have the same reference. It should not be like some parts have one by 50,000 and some by one by one lakh and then some by one million. No, it should be constant and it should be correct. Area should be represented with a true shape. India should look like India. America should look like America. Sri Lanka should look like Sri Lanka. 
and equal areas on the earth surface should be shown as equal areas of the sky like sri lanka and india the proportionate size should be around 1 is to 10 so that should be looking like 1 is to 10 in on the chart also simple point students but very important points i am showing you from the text because theory can come from these points with respect to representation of the earth surface all four points have you got it correctly easy now about your navigation requirements this is where questions will come from and this is where our next part of focus is based upon majorly your rumb lines should be straight lines because it will give you constant direction right in reality the rumb line is a regularly curved line to give us constant directions because they cut all the meridians at the same angles correct everyone students all your chart should make sure that the rumb lines are straight lines on a flat piece of paper your great circles should also be straight lines now this is going to be a paradox in itself how can both of them be same we need these requirements how much are we getting how much are we not getting is what we have to understand latitudes and longitudes should be easy to plot if you are plotting if you are sketching your diagram if you are trying to analyze if you remember our first lecture on in flight navigation we realized that the distance to go is always reducing If 120 nautical miles from A to B in one hour, they will say in 10 minutes you have crossed what 20 nautical miles. So distance to go would be 100 nautical miles. Then the distance would go to 80, then 60, then 40. Those type of projections are plotting. We can plot on a piece of chart. Adjacent sheets should fit correctly. So if there are multiple sheets making up a big chart, which is actually the case. all jepson chart should connect and fit perfectly next one like a piece of jigsaw puzzle and your chart's coverage should always be worldwide now talking about these points just look at this point again two of these properties can never be obtained except on the globe what are these two properties scale we can make but it can never be constant and correct we can definitely use non perspective methods that is modifying the charts mathematically to give me a constant scale in small areas but not over the large scales although you will have a legend scale will be there but it will not be accurate in all parts of your chart even if you are following the chart the more smaller the chart the more accurate it would be the more larger it is the less accuracy will be now again the shape of these large areas cannot be represented perfectly however it is possible to represent the shapes of small areas accurately so these are the two things we cannot achieve but it is possible to obtain all properties but not on the same chart unfortunately not together on the same chart but luckily for air navigation all these points are not necessary we don't really need if the areas are correctly represented or not okay distortions are fine now i am going to talk about what is orthomorphism okay or conformity take a quick look at properties of ideal charts before i discuss orthomorphism or conformity with you students which are the two points which you cannot achieve on a chart but on a globe and uh, yeah those points could be important one mark point uh, theories for your questions for your exam theory based study it i'm giving you couple of minutes if it feels too rushed to you if you think i'm rushing too much please let me know i'll slow down I'm just trying to you know do it a little fast if it doesn't work then we can go slow
कन्फॉर्मेलिटी और ऑर्थोमोर्फिज्म वॉट डज इट स्टैंड students any any confusion on understanding what are the properties of an idle chart easy you understood will you be able to mark the correct answers mcqs the questions could come like mark the correct statement and four statements would be given to you similar statements with certain exceptions so those kind of questions you can get here what are the properties representation and navigation out of navigation what are the ones that are not available for us now for navigation what is the most important skill with respect to your chart most important navigation feature for a chart is to represent accurate directions between two points as they would be on actual earth like for example if i am traveling from a to b and if this direction if i say if this direction is 045 it may be true or may be magnetic then on the actual globe reaching from a to b 045 they both should be same and the similarity should be such that this angle i can measure on a chart using a protractor how do you think you as a pilot when you will be learning to make your own flight plan and before making your flight plan what is it that flight dispatchers do they look at the chart they connect the two points definitely they'll find out the great circle track we have formulas to do it rub line track we have formulas to do it but a simple measurement with a protractor can also tell you what is the angle that you need to fly from a to b to reach directly and that angle or that direction has to be correct with respect to your actual direction on the earth that is an important point on your navigation charts any charts who have this property are known as orthomorphic or conformal charts those charts who don't have it are non orthomorphic or non conformal will you use any non orthomorphic or non conformal chart for your flight planning no simple so those words can orthomorphism or conformality means charts having this property many charts only a few charts have this property not all charts can have this property so only those few charts are of reference to us okay so write down this point the most important property for navigation charts is that the navigation bearings must be correct and the critical property is that 
angles on the earth must be represented correctly on the chart. Charts having this property are known as orthomorphic or conformal charts. Now students, it is obvious that charts are not only made for navigation, okay? But charts can also be used to show geographical patterns, field patterns. So different charts will have different properties. Okay. For us, what is more important is for navigation, we need to make sure the bearings are correct, if nothing else. That's why you'll, you'll realize if you've gone through a few of the navigation charts that we have seen, the only geographical feature that we have in them is your geographical boundary black color line that's it nothing else we only care about the non-earth related parts but what are earth related on those charts the location of your navigation it's like VOR and your uh, ndbs that's it so our charts don't talk about where is a river where is a lake where is a mountain first layer we understand what is the importance with respect to the whole ats network and then probably a second layer will be added to the chart showing you counters at least if nothing else. Okay. These are conformal charts. Now with respect to conformal charts also, there are a couple of requirements which could be important with respect to two. Okay. You just need to remember that from all the projections that are available to you, you should only select charts which are orthomorphic or conformal. Pilot should only use orthomorphic or same orthomorphic or conformal charts only. Remember, a simple point can carry one mark in the examination. Now, to achieve orthomorphism or conformality, you need to meet two points, two conditions. Two conditions need to be met. What is the first condition? Condition number one. The meridians, okay, everybody remembers what meridians are and the meridians and parallels of latitude on the chart must intersect at right angles. In bracket right as on earth. Now recall this understanding of meridian and your uh, what do you say? Your parallels of latitude. And think about this statement. All meridians and all parallels of latitude cut cut each other at 90 degrees angle. Is it true or is it false? Think about it. Vivek Yadav, Likit, Sankal, Subhaji, Vivek Dhakar. I think Sparsh is watching on YouTube. Manan is watching on YouTube. What do you think? Correct? 
Is that correct? Do you think 45 degree parallel of latitude cuts 90 degrees to uh, 010 degrees east meridian? You don't have to even think about it. Yes, all meridians and parallels of latitude, they cut each other at 90 degrees. So if you're making a confirmal chart, or if you have to verify whether a chart is confirmal or not, make sure all meridians and parallels are cutting each other at 90 degrees. As on as. Following students, easy. Easy to understand. You can write down, this is known as 90 degree intersect rule. Okay. Always cross check. Point number two, condition number two. Remember condition number one. Now condition number two. For charts to be conformal. How do we ensure that charts have the same bearings as on the earth? By making sure these two elements are there. The first condition being all meridians parallels are 90 degree. And the second being something to do with scale. Okay. The second condition talks about the scale. Right now. At any point on the chart, the scale should be the same in all directions. Scale should be same in all directions or should be change at the same rate in all directions. Students, quickly take an overview. I will need a go ahead from you all to move ahead. Okay. I want you all to go through the notes that I have given you again and make sure you remember these. Don't keep it for later. And don't rush right now thinking it's easy. I don't want to do my exam. Just study. Just study and learn. Don't be elsewhere. Just focus on this topic. We are only covering major points. These are the points that are important to you. Go through it again. Do you know what is conformality or orthomorphism? How to achieve it? What are the prerequisites for an ideal chart? There are two conditions with respect to an ideal chart. Representation of the earth and what is the other category? Representation of the chart. Representation of an ideal chart, representation of the earth surface and navigation requirements. With respect to earth surface, there are four points. With respect to navigation requirements, there are five points. Out of the five points, two things cannot be achieved on the same chart. But we need to have orthomorphic charts. There are many such charts. Orthomorphic charts will have accurate directions as on the earth. How to get accurate directions? We need to make sure two points are met in the projection of the charts. First is all meridians and parallels will cut each other at 90 degrees. Second is the scale should either be constant in all directions or should change at a constant rate in all directions. Then azimuthal, cylindrical, and uh, conical. Azimuthal is 
plane on any point cylindrical is mercator you saw it is placed on the equator only and conical will give you the entire northern hemisphere uh, lambert's name is associated with conical projection we also know reduced earth to scale before we go ahead i want you all to be thorough with these points take a couple of more minutes study please so that you don't have to do it later before we go ahead i'm going to talk about a little bit about scale and how to do simple calculations and then we'll come and discuss a summary simply a summary with respect to important points on all different types of projections like what is the scale look like oh, sorry what does the rum line look like what does the great circle look like what is the formula way to find departure or great circle or rum line that's these are the common points for all different projections that's it although students projections is actually when you get done with your exams when you're free for exam students and others who are not giving exams it's an interesting concept it's easy you should learn you should read it at least that's it you should read it once for for knowledge for the knowledge there are more inventions when it comes to charts you know but still till date no produced chart is accurate it is like that let me know we'll move ahead okay take your time study this much we'll do some numericals couple of sums only with respect to scale so easy You know, students before GPS, people used to travel a lot in cars, bikes, go on road trips, or maybe for some work, even fly planes. So they used to actually buy charts, whichever charts they could get, and before starting their journey on those charts, they used to mark everything with a pen and a paper. everything that when i do i have to take a left when do i have to take a right which will be the major junction that we are going to cross similarly for in flight navigation also they used to scan everything make sure the directions then visual references on the chart will there be a lake a mountain a river a chimney a factory and so on and then after the blueprint of the path was made on an actual chart they would carry that chart and then keep looking at the chart stopwatch and actually look at the compass and time it and with respect to people on the ground they were just looking for those landmarks to make those turns and so many times they used to get lost thinking i missed a left turn right turn so they would if they are confused where they are they will look around they will look around and that thing they will spot on the chart and they will look at okay this is where i am and this is where i was supposed to be now for you for me and for everyone else because of the inventions of technology everything can be found out digitally the same things the methods are same so when you have maps to go from one place to another google maps does this these things for you what earlier days people used to do for them find out the shortest path find out the path without uh, tolls and this and that like that okay so the logic is the same the way of doing it is changed now it's become much more easier now and much more fast and these books and everything they are written since 50 years 40 years 30 years it's like that and that is still what we are learning because our whole aviation is working on that technology all the new technology is added extra but it's all second nothing is primary it's like that about the 5g thing also they have stopped talking about it any big issue comes it suddenly fades away but god knows what's going to happen now it actually 
if you remember some of your radio instruments it's good tomorrow i'll give you a list again certain of the radio instruments have frequencies about 3 gigahertz 4 gigahertz those systems will are actually threatened because of mobile phone frequency interference is nothing else so those those systems can pick up any random mobile phone signal and give the pilot a wrong reading for that particular instrument that was the concern with all the pilots nothing else so 5g definitely is come will come but how will they protect these things from happening is of concern because these systems are very reliable if you try to modify these systems then the technology behind making new systems it takes a lot of years test periods approvals so that's why pilots were wondering thinking that aviation can come to a standstill because of this modification happening a lot of planes will have to be grounded so that will cause a huge loss so they were worried about that what about the transition phase so nobody had a clarity i think what they were thinking about was this that have some clarities in picture that these interferences don't happen so maybe we'll have to block 5g frequencies in the vicinity of wherever aerodrome frequencies are there and only allow 4g so we cannot just rely completely on 5g especially because all major cities have airports in their center and the core so i think the solution is going to be very complicated and they should have thought before it about it uh, these telecom companies they should have thought about it when they brought it 4g a few years ago but maybe i'm sure thoughts are in place so you all don't worry about it i cow and everybody they really care about life so telecom companies anyway are very rich i don't know what loss they will have is they will delay it a little further okay students easy points talk about scale let's write down the definition of scale a very simple definition these points i'm giving to you because these points can come in your theory questions okay scale is the relationship wherever the word relationship comes there has to be some understanding that there will be a ratio this to that scale is a relationship between the length of a line drawn on a chart between two points and the distance on the earth between the same points if you are always confused if you think you are confused between what is considered in the scale first is it earth and then the reduced earth or the chart is it chart and then the so it is the chart first and then the actual earth okay now scale can be represented in three ways scale can be represented in three ways okay number 1 words word statements it will be simply given to you in words like 1 inch stands to 10 nautical miles in your textbook this definition is given word statements like 1 inch to 10 nautical miles it will mean that 1 inch on the chart is 10 nautical miles on the earth second way is a graduated line or a graduated scale line they are normally in the bottom of the bottom of the chart and they look like this there will be one line like this that will show you your different dimensions
and then there will be one another line then there will be another line like this and these line will have dimensions given with certain graduations like this and these will show you that this much length is how much in terms of meters kilometers you will have kms you will have nautical miles you will have meters you will have feet so it shows you by looking at the line that this much maybe this much that is less than one centimeter will be equal to one kilometer on the screen on the chart like that. what is very important for us is to understand the third element which is where your equations would come is known as representative fraction rf representative fraction is a statement in words put into mathematical form and is calculated from the equation write down the equation scale is equal to chart length upon earth distance if i say your scale is um let's say 1 cm on the chart represents 500000 cm on earth so if 1 cm on chart is 5 lakhs that is 500000 cm on earth then what does it mean your scale becomes 1 upon the one is your chart length cl 500000 which is your ed or the distance like this where you will know the unit is centimeters like this it means if you have an icau apri topographical chart topography is a term okay we used to denote geographical properties along with other properties of an area on a chart so if there is a icau 1 is to 500000 topographical chart i'm just giving you these keywords it can come in the exams a very easy to score point if this is given to you it means that on chart 1 cm is represented okay 1 cm represents 500000 cm on the earth represents 500000 cm on earth and 1 inch will represent 500000 inches on earth so no matter what the unit okay no matter what the unit you will get the same relevance between all units sorry for the bad bad very bad in writing now what is scale scale comes with respect to a formula chart length upon earth distance 
the formula for the equation for scale is also an equation for what is known as representative factor. It is one of the ways to denote scales. And this is the most commonly and widely used that we come across. Okay, one by 500,000, as we saw, is actually the definition for scale, but it could denote the same, CMs to CMs, inches to inches, and so on. What I'm trying to show is that if you can remember this, then it is as good as entering data in your scientific computer, scientific calci, to solve your equation. There could be anything. They could give you one example of a scale and ask you a couple of things. Before we solve that, there is one important example. Converting from a statement in words to a representative fraction. Okay. It is important that we use the same units. Now, for example, converting words to RF, you might get a question that convert the following statement into its equivalent RF. So if that is the case, if you get an example like this, okay, one inch to 10 nautical miles. So what does it mean in RF? RF as good as scale is equal to one inch upon, you will write 10 nautical miles. But now you don't want 10 nautical miles. You want to convert it into inches. Okay, students, so please use a CX3 and tell me if nautical miles can be converted into inches directly on your CX3 unit converter. Please write your answers in the chat box. Is there a direct conversion? If not, I'll tell you an indirect conversion. You have to remember your RF, representative factor, has to be dimensionless. No matter what units you give to this RF, it has to stand true. So be it for CMs, be it for inches, be it for NMs. We want the same ratio. How do we convert it? We just need to make sure numerator, denominator have the same inches, same units. As per the equation, whatever final similar unit we get, that into fraction and the fraction will always and should always have one in the numerator to make logic. If you're thinking, why can I not convert one inch into nautical miles, then the RF should be one by something. That is very important. That one unit on the chart is very important for us to find out. Are we following? So Vivek Yadav, see, you reduce that 0 0.1 inch. I'm saying 10 nautical miles into inches. The kids, Bojit, Sankal, Vivek Nagar, you have not sent your answer. So 10 nautical miles, so RF is equal to one upon 10 nautical miles. If I convert into inches, how much do I get? Your answers are correct. 7 to 9 -er. what is it? 7 to 9 -er, 133, 7 to 9 -er, 134, 7 to 9 -er, 133. Correct. Vivek Dhakar, you have not sent. So it becomes 7 to 9 -er, 133, three, right? So we can take 729er as 150 or 729er 200. 
or you can say one is to seven to nine or one zero zero like this. Now in your exams, the options that you will get, it is not necessary that the Vivek Dhakar, what is this? How will you simplify this in your answers? Sir, six uh, zero point and then six zeros and then one three seven. Please do it. This is right. this is not that that way. If you get an answer, it's not healthy for us. We need to simplify it into individual numbers. Now, what I'm trying to say in this equation, students, in the textbook, uh, in, not in the textbook. Sorry, in the exam, you can get this option also because their conversion of uh, inches to nautical miles will be different from your conversion, possibly depending upon what conversion formula they are using. In your exam, you have to make sure that your answer and the answer that is there, they are close to each other and they are matching. Don't think you are getting a wrong answer because three last digits are not matching with this answer because this would be given. Follow the first three. You have what? 7,29,000, 7,29,000. That is correct. The major sum is correct of the number. Only 150 and 600, they have a difference of 450 between each other. Compare all the other answers. If this is the least difference between your answer and other answers, then this will be your correct answer. Remember that. Your option might not give you correctly 7 to 9 or 133 that you are getting. It could give you any rounded off figures. Everybody thorough with this point, how to round off, because sometimes your answers that you are getting will not be the answers. So, Vivek Dhakar, you're okay, fine. Why are you giving me two answers then? The 7 to 9 or 133 is correct. So your actual answer is 1729 or 133. So whichever is closest. If all these four options are given to you, then this is the closest. 133 is more close to 150 than 100, like that. But this much closeness in answers will not be given to you. Don't worry. They will not be playing with you, like giving you two, two digits here and there missing. So about your RF, write down this important note. See, in your RF, there are no units, okay? RF becomes dimensionless, that is, it can work with centimeters or any other units as long as the ratio remains the same. Everybody good? Can I give you a practice sum to solve? Please try not to move faster than me if you're looking at the textbook students. Just go with the speed that I'm taking you all with. Okay? Now solve this equation. It's a simple sum. You'll give me your answers quickly in the chat box. On a chart, 5 cm centimeters represents 7 nautical miles. What is the scale? In a navigation, uh, your Oxford textbook, they have given you all possible methods without the CX3 also to convert. I would suggest you go with CX3 only.
I am writing your correct options. at the option students so budget your is yours is option charlie is it click it yours is option alpha and uh click it there will no, no not be any unit because it will become dimensionless okay sir vivek dhakar okay do you all remember what had i said your numerator should be 1 so how do i get if this is the first answer that you are getting so you will do 5 by 1 uh, correction 5 by 5 upon 1 2 9 or 6 3 0 0 upon 5 so 5 by 5 you will get as 1 and 1 2 9 or 6 3 0 0 divided by 5 you will get somewhere around 2 5 9 or 2 8 0 this is the actual answer which is option c Students who have answered incorrectly, you were rushing, you were not remembering the RF will always have numerator 1. And how to do it? No matter what you get, whatever your numerator is, divide your numerator and denominator both by that value. If your numerator comes 10, divide both by 10 by 10. Simple. You will get 1 by whatever you get. That will be your RF. So you are doing the first step correctly. In earlier equation, it was just one. That's why it was easy. We directly got it. Now here, they are twisting the questions. It is like that. Easy to find? Looks easy now. Sankal? Afonso. Vivek Yadav, Likit, Dhakar, Vivek, Subhaji. Students have got the wrong answer. Are you able to understand why one more step needs to be done? RF will always be 1 by something. It will not be 5 by something. Although option number 1 is correct, it's not the final answer. Got it, students? Lick it. Vivek Yadav. Fine. Yes, no, maybe. Please let me know. Sure. No? Yes, sir. Now, a modification of this sum. Okay. The simple scale sum is this chart length upon a distance equal to representative factor. Okay, remember that. This is a simple one. Your values could change in your Mercator charts and other charts. So we are doing a simple method, not a Mercator scale method right now. Okay. The question is this. See if you can solve. On a chart scale, 1 by 5,000, 1,000. How many nautical miles on the earth are represented by 1.7 centimeter? You will bring down this answer to a fraction of 1 by something. And that something that you will get, that you will multiply by 1.7. If you are converting everything into centimeters. Got it, students? I've given you the hint. It's basic math, Vivek. So, they are asking about 1.5 centimeter. So, what you could do is, you can consider, what will you do? How will you do? How will you solve it? 
you can simplify the equation. Your RF factor is one. So I'm writing the solution here also. 500,000 is equal to 1.7 chart length upon earth distance. They are asking us this. Now that we have simplified it into this, is it, isn't it easy to solve this fraction? How? You bring ED here and take that fraction on the other side, like this. So earth distance is what you need to find out is equal to 1.7 into the numerator becomes denominator and the denominator becomes numerator like this upon one. Try to solve, write your answers in the chat box. Now, when you're giving me ED, I need units. Only RF is dimensionless. Earth distance will be dimension, right? I need the dimensions also. So, Sankalp and Vivek Yadav has given me answers. Sankalp, is it centimeters? Can you convert it into nautical miles also? Vivek Yadav, you also convert it? Okay. Vivek Yadav, are you sure it's nautical miles? No, sir, it's centimeters. I need to convert it. Yeah, so, so have this presence of mind of your unit conversions, okay? So this is CM, like this, right now for you. One point seven into Very easy. So you get eight five zero 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 centimeters here, which you can convert it into nautical miles. So you get your answer as because your options might not have this, your options will have something else, mostly nautical miles. Because the question was, how many nautical miles on the earth are there? The question was specifically asking about nautical miles. So if your answer is centimeters, don't be in a rush to submit your answers. Look at the question again. And what's the conversion answer? 45.9, 45.9 at 0, 45.9 at 0. That's correct. It's equal to... 45.90. Easy. Now, two more keywords about scale. Large scale charts. They give you lots of detail. And small scale charts, they give you lots of area. What do you mean by large scale and what do you mean by small scale? Have you seen Earth, uh, the whole world maps in a small piece of paper? We can see the entire Earth. We can see the entire Earth on a mobile phone also in a small chart. Now that is a small scale chart. It has a lot of area, but we don't have details. This globe, we can say it's a small scale globe. 
it has the entire earth but details are not there i have all the areas but details are not there and when i talk about scales from 1 is to 50000 that value of ratio they are large scale maps okay so large scale and just in case you get any one mark question we'll just add large scale small scale large scale lots of detail here lots of area your large scale gives you a larger rf representative factor and your small scale gives you smaller rf example your large scale rf would be 1 by 50000 and your small scale rf would be 1 by 500000 you might think sir the denominator is higher so it should be more no the denominator the higher the denominator smaller is your scale Because one by five hundred thousand, if you convert it into decimals, it's a smaller number compared to one by fifty thousand. That's why large scale will give you larger RF, small scale will give you smaller RF. Okay. We need de details only. That's why we use large scale. So if you are thinking. One centimeter giving me larger distance on Earth is large scale, no. One centimeter giving me fifty centimeters is good. One centimeter giving me hundred centimeters that becomes a smaller scale, not a larger scale. Okay, remember because it's in denominator. Do not be confused. Sankar, you look confused. These points, Subhajit, Vivek, following. don't get confused these points large scale gives you smaller denominator easy to understand and small scale gives you larger denominator Are we good? I'm going to share questions from Oxford textbook. Choose any question that you want to solve out of these. Maybe do number one. Somebody can do number two. I'm giving you a couple of minutes. Do number one. One centimeter represents five kilometers. What's the RF? Just write your answers. We'll cross-check your answers. Sankar, cross-check your answer before submitting. So, would you cross-check your answer, okay, before submitting? everybody is giving me answers for number 1 vivek yadav incomplete answer is it numerator 
how can rf be only one numerator vivek yadav it's a ratio right it's a relationship vivek targets arikit quickly solve we'll check our answers do two sums here just two any two you can do and then do the question number 2 do any one on question number 2 see if you are able to answer choose your question just make sure you answer it correctly Take your time. Do not rush. We are trying to increase our speed a little bit and rushing. We should keep both things separate. We should try to increase our speed but not rush. When we think we are rushing, we should pause. No submissions. Still solving. Take it easy, students. Uh, Vivek Yadav, which question number? Be very careful. Question number one A, one B. Question number two A, two B. Good. One D. Okay, Subhajit. You can choose your question. Just make sure you correctly answer. Quick, students. Check this out. the last questions here question number 4 5 6 they are also talking about distance flown by an aircraft 5 minutes and ground speed speed distance time formula you have to just find what they are asking you to find probably distance then use that distance does the speed matter not matter question number 2 a the sankalp very fast okay very good we got a question number two. question number 1 2 right that is okay 1 2 anything else students you are doing let's check answers quickly i am zooming it out so that you can see more questions You can do one one for each question. Let's try to solve easy ones, easy tough. One second. Okay, I'll share the screen. One second. Questions are back. Okay, on screen. I'm checking your answers in the meantime. Started. Okay. Until question number one looks correct. One is two. Subhajit, one is correct. Vikara, one is correct.
always remember most of your answers would be rounded off. So your answer for question number one, bravo, Sankal. And question number one, uh, one is good for everyone, one alpha. Question number one, bravo, the equation that you have got is around 1000, 1080, right? 1000 and 080. That generally will be rounded off to 1000, 1000 in your answers. Question number one, delta. Subhujit, correct. It will be rounded off. So find out the closest answer. Question number one, done. Vive, question number one, two is correct. It will be rounded off. Just give it. Question number one, Charlie, lick it. Correct. It will be rounded off to 6,000,000. 600,000, not 1,000,000. 600,000. Yours is correct. Number one, Charlie. One, Charlie. Vivek Yadav, check if you have given me answer for Charlie or Delta. Cross check. One by seven eight seven four zero one. Is it for Charlie or is it for Delta? Vivek, cross check. Yes. Question number one, Delta. Your Delta is Echo. You're playing with numbers, I think. Sorry, Vivek sir. Yadav. Yes, sir. I was a little bit confused in the numbers. Uh, careful, these are beginner's mistakes. Don't make yes. students don't do this in exam, okay? You're solving for question number four and answering in question number five. Don't do that. Okay. Question number one, everyone is correct. Um, very good. Now question number two, I'm checking. Sankar. Question number two, alpha. Correct. And number two, very good. Sankar, good job. Question number two, Bravo. Subhajit. Question number two, Bravo, incorrect. Wait, 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 wait. Correct. It's correct, Subhajit. It's correct. Very good. Good job, Subhajit. Vivek Yadav, fix this. Question number four, Alpha. Okay, Sankar, this will be rounded off to 2260000. 3.65 inches, correct, Sankar. Vivek Dhakar, 5 alpha. Good job. Sent. What are they asking? Are they asking RF or what? Question number 5 alpha. Let me check. If they are asking for RF, then don't use units, Vivek. Vivek Dhakar. Remove the unit because in the options, they can give you a unit also. 1 is 2, 2, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. Unit, unit will not be a part, okay? We've talked. Vivek Yadav, 1 delta, okay? Correction. Correct answers, Vivek Yadav. Subhajit, 5 alpha is correct. It will be rounded off. And 5 bravo is correct. Subhajit, good job. So far, everything is correct. Everyone. Good job. Very good. Are you doing a couple of more? Should we move ahead? Any more submissions? Okay, fine. Let's move ahead. I'll wait. I think you all are submitting one more answer. Do that and then stop solving. Whoever submitted the last answer, you can stop solving. Whoever is not doing it, take your time. Please do it. If you're facing it difficult, let me know. I'm very happy to see your answers. Remember, your answers would be rounded off. Students, are you solving?
question number three alpha. What is the correction? So they had said that we need to give in centimeter inches and I, uh, and I provided you an answer which is in kilometer. So I need to convert it. Okay, so do it. Question number two alpha, like it correct. Wait, let me check. Six. Likit, question number two, alpha incorrect actually. Centimeter value is also wrong and inches is also wrong. Question number two, alpha incorrect. Likit. Cross check again. So, we did question number five, alpha correct, correct. Six alpha subjit one three five zero correct good job. Sankal so five alpha is correct. Fine students. Whoever is done, you can stop. Let's move ahead. Okay, done everyone. Good. See the answers would look like this. Rounded of values. Not all of you are rounded off. Two, five, bravo. What's your answer? Five, bravo, 20.5 inch. Negative, five, bravo is incorrect, Vivek Dhakar. almost three times extra. Students, take a picture of this key. Everything is there. You can take a screenshot or a picture. Okay, done. You will need it. Vivek Yadav, question number three, alpha. And bravo. Alpha. No, it's wrong. Question number three, alpha is wrong. It cannot be this high. Answer, Vivek Yadav. Do it carefully, okay? Yes, Vivek Dhakar, spot your mistakes. Everybody take a screenshot of this. You can solve it later now. Let's move ahead. Done, I'm stopping the screen share. Okay, students, what about your lunch break? Like, do you want to break for lunch now, half an hour? Vivek Yadav, uh, Vivek Dhakar, Chankar, Subhuji, all saying yes, lick it. So I want to do another part. It's a summary part, small part, but I have to give you a few explanations, not just give you notes. But after explanation, it will be easy to go through the summary part of it. We'll be talking about specific details of marketer this and that. That's it. what does the rum line this and that. So another half an hour or one hour will be spending. And then whatever, how much ever we have picked up, we'll take it from there. So please come back at 2.30. I'm keeping the session on. Okay. Refresh. Five minutes here and there. I'll wait for you all. Okay. Fine. Come back at 2.30. I'm keeping the meeting on as it is. Sun 12, 6 a.m. Check in. Correct. Good job, Sun Very good. Come back half an hour.
Welcome back everyone. I hope you all got enough time. So sorry. But 30 minutes is max. You won't get more than that anywhere. Even in our offline classes, 30 minutes max. Okay, students. So, so far we are almost done with all the basic points. Now there are certain specific points like the formula for scale on marketer charts is something that is of interest. We'll discuss this after I share these key points with you with the table. So we'll do a couple of numericals based upon that. So simple sum, just the formula we need to remember. Before that, I'm going to give you, in summary, a small table, which is like a summary page of your textbook. But I'm going to talk about these points, about all these three charts. And these are very important for your exams because specific to this table, questions come. Now that we understand quite a few basics about uh, what projection is, what we're supposed to do with it. So it becomes simple. Another dimension of studies when it comes to charts is the differences into the rum line track, the green circle track, the arrangement of your meridians, the whole sketch that we used to make. So for us, for CPL, we don't need to really get too much in depth. But even if you read, okay, you will understand everything, is what I'm saying. Okay, it will make sense to you now because you know the basics. Right now, we will not be dealing with it in depth, but a few points definitely we can talk about. So, with respect to your charts, what are the key properties of these charts? We are talking about properties of these three charts. Okay. We're going to write about all three charts in sequence so that it becomes easy for us to distinguish between them. Okay, what are these properties? If I talk about properties like scale, okay, for marketer, what is marketer? Is it cylindrical projection? Yes. So when we talk about scale in marketer chart, what happens to the scale? The scale is correct on equator. When you take a marketer projection, the scale is accurate on the reduced earth and the actual earth. And this scale is within 1% of this real connection between the projection and the actual earth up to 8 degrees north and south latitudes. So 0 to 8 degrees north and south, you have amazing accuracy in terms of scale on a marketer chart. Why do we see Mercator, Mercator, Mercator everywhere? It was the first chart. 400 years or so people have used these charts when people used to travel through Navy ships, naval ships. They used only Mercator charts because they give you a constant course, a constant heading. The limitations of Mercator chart, we include those limitations. We work on those limitations and we get conical charts and your azimuthal, that is your polar chart. So your conical charts are also known as Lambert charts, remember? And your azimuthal plane are also known as polar stereographic charts. So scale on Mercator chart is correct on the equator. How about the scale on your Lambert chart? Lambert's chart is conical chart, remember? Okay. We say the scale is correct on 
standard parallels now you would be thinking what is this standard parallel i'll show you a diagram okay we'll come to it what is the standard parallel is a uh, we can say this is a jargon which i'll show you with a diagram and talking about the third one which is your polar stereographic chart what is polar stereographic azimuth the scale on the polar stereographic chart is correct on poles like this now about more points on the scale just add on marketer apart from equator that is elsewhere apart from the equator the scale changes increases okay scale increases as the s e c a n t second secant however you want to call it or sec as we call it in trigonometry sec of latitude and the scale is within 1% up to 8 degrees from the equator 8 degrees both north and south now this scale secant of latitude when i give you the formula end of this tabular uh, the table understanding you will see how now why secant and all derivations are there in the textbook but they are out of scope for us you can always read and understand in your free time if you are looking for more explanation as to why is why okay talking about lambert's chart what are the other points that you can add on the scale on a lambert's conical chart the scale is correct on standard parallels i'll show you what the standard parallel is it's basically the first parallel over which you are placing the paper and elsewhere you can write down scale is contracted within the standard parallels okay you can write scale is least at parallel of origin so i'll show you this it's very easy what is parallel of origin and your scale is expanded out of this is expanded outside of standard parallels so if you remember on the diagram of the conical chart we had a small box let me show it to you check this okay one second check this out lambert's conformal chart a conical chart that is they have referred to two parallels and standard parallels and they're talking about change of latitude but this diagram is not good to explain what that is standard parallel yes 
this one so now they in in the start of conical charts if you see the mercator charts have two limitations great circles are not projected as straight lines we will write that in the table and chart is not of a constant scale it's a rapidly changing scale now with respect to conical chart students if i look at this example then in this diagram where exactly is the paper touching the globe the paper is in touch on the globe somewhere between here 45 north 60 north the contact is made over here okay the contact is mainly made if you see this parallel 45 degree north parallel over here can everybody see okay this 45 degree north was the main parallel in red over here when the projection is made students this is that parallel on which the paper is placed and your scale is correct you can place this cone piece on any parallel and the scale on that parallel will always be correct that is the meaning in this case it is 45 degree north so the text read on the text the uh, okay about on the simple conical projection scale is correct on the parallel of tangency what is the parallel of tangency this point where the paper is in touch okay in this example it is 45 degree now this parallel on which scale is correct is called standard parallel scale expands on either side of the standard parallel so on the standard parallel the scale is perfect if you are magnifying the standard parallel and getting it from degrees to minutes and then seconds if you are expanding it if you are zooming it out then your scale converges scale reduces reduces and then it becomes zero and when you are going out of the standard parallel when you are going above and below 45 not then what happens the scale expands it increases in size is what they are trying to say do we understand this point students easy to understand what is standard parallel now within the standard parallels outside standard parallels what is the meaning subhajit i cannot see you are you following like it and vivek yadav good easy right it's not it's not complicated okay that's it parallel of origin we can say goes to zero then right uh, what does our table saying on the parallel of origin it goes to zero let's go back to our table and quickly write down our table scale is contracted within the standard parallels scale is least at parallel of origin scale will go least and scale is expanded outside and scale is correct on the standard parallel simple unique points to lambert's conical projection now let's talk about polar stereographic what about the scale the scale is correct at poles apart from poles the scale will expand everywhere okay so apart from poles elsewhere it will expand everywhere yes uncle go ahead so what is parallel of origin 45 degree north we can say exact point that exact point that is parallel of origin standard parallel parallel of origin you could say but when you zoom in zoom in zoom in there will be one point which is exactly more accurate that will be parallel of origin there. elsewhere your scale expands as sec 
square or they call it as half of colat like this or oh, okay now polar stereographic is the least important out of these three marketer and lambert is the most important okay you cannot see the screen my bad closer to the poles up to 12 degrees from the poles you get good accuracy in your scale and further away your scale value reduces so let's write down scale expands as sec square elsewhere okay and scale is 1% from 90 degrees to 78 degrees and scale is 3% from 78 degrees to 70 degrees latitude the difference in this formula for scale i will we will add here keep some space over here okay we we'll look at the formula following quickly now orthomorphism are these charts orthomorphic yes if they are navigation charts they have to be orthomorphic so orthomorphism will be yes write down are these charts orthomorphic for polar you will write yes all navigation charts must be for lamberts you will write yes all navigation charts must be and definitely for mercator also yes all navigation charts must be let's uh, talk about the other important points like what is the status of graticule on these charts so next point is graticule now talk about mercator chart and graticule with respect to the mercator chart the table says that meridians are straight parallel lines evenly spaced so in the graticule let's talk about meridians meridians are straight and they are parallel to each other straight parallel lines don't confuse this parallel with your latitude meridians are straight parallel lines evenly spaced if you remember the picture of mercator they are exactly parallel up to the north pole also and they are evenly spaced what about your parallels of latitude the parallels of latitude again they are parallel are they evenly spaced or not let's write down they are straight parallel lines with the space between them increasing with the secant of the latitude you'll write they are straight and parallel lines with spacing increasing the spacing increases as you go above or below go on to the higher latitudes so spacing increases with the secant of latitude where else did we saw secant did we see it in polar chart yes remember the lines parallels are not equally spaced okay they are not equally spaced the line increases the distance increases with respect to the secant sec it's just a trigonometric function which will be there in your calculations it is like that like we use sin and cos like that
what about this one lambert's conical what about meridians lambert's conical the meridians on lambert's conical are write down straight lines meridians are straight lines are they parallel no meridians are straight line originating from the pole so you know they are diverging out from the pole what about parallels parallels you could say they are parallels are arc of circles if you remember the chart the conical page opened was not a complete circle so all the parallels although from prime meridian these two were prime meridians if you remember so they are arcs of a circle parallels okay are arcs of circles centered around the pole okay and write down pole is always off the map pole cannot be seen on the map this is what they are trying to say it's always off the map what about meridians in your polar stereographic same as your conical projection you will write meridians are straight lines radiating from the pole they are radiating we are not saying originating okay and parallels what about parallels my parallels are concentric circles drawn from the pole they are all one ring within the ring within the ring within the ring one circle within one circle within one circle within one circle they all have the same center so parallels are concentric circles parallels are concentric circles drawn from the pole quickly look at these two points orthomorphism is easy just look at the first point about scale and second point about graticule see if you understand the differences quickly memorize it right now don't keep it for later see do you remember try to think it with respect to examination perspective whether you'll be able to remember theory behind them or not Just take your time to study them also right now. If you remember it now, later on you'll have to just look at it again once and try to remember. Okay. for polar stereographic the scale expands as secant only but out yeah that's it only correct at the pole while mercator the scale increases that is expands as per secant of latitude only okay but with polar it is sec square not just sec secant square so that's the difference for polar so all different charts they have different important points nothing is overlapping all unique points to so just make sure that you remember i think couple of questions can come yeah, basic questions that and then graticule meridians both are parallel like in meridian in, in mercator meridians and parallels are what perpendicular to each other but spacing for meridians is good equal but for parallels increases as second 
scale accuracy 1% up to 8 degrees for mercator for polar 1% from 90 to 78 and then 3% 78 to 70 graticule meridian straight lines originating from pole for lambert and parallels are arcs of circles not complete circles while polar parallels are concentric circles and meridians are radiating out from the pole similar to the lambert one but in the lambert they orig uh, originate here they radiate in lambert we cannot see the poles because it's off chart in polar stereographic we can see the poles also Let's talk about the rum line on these charts. Okay, students. Let's talk about the rum line. Let's start with polar charts. Now, what is the rum line on polar charts? It's a very simple concept. The rum lines are curved. Okay. And the curve is concave. The curve is concave to the pole of projection. Whenever you think what is concave, so this side, you see this, this side is concave side. It's like caving in, it's like a cave. So this concave side would be towards the poles simple something that is quite obvious these are talking you are talking about rum lines so all your parallels how are they represented they are your rum lines parallels are your rum lines right generally parallels are your rum lines you can make other rum lines also so rum lines are curved and the curve is concave to the pole of projection like this so the pole will be like this in the center somewhere so if i talk about the rum line for lambert Students, remind me, can a meridian be called as a rum line? How many? Yes, how many? No. Subhajit? Correct. Rum, meridians can also be called as rum lines because they give you a constant direction, either north or south. We have solved it in departure. Right? Good. Uh, when it comes to rum line in Lambert's conical projection, write down only meridians are straight lines. So when you're using meridians as rum line, then your meridians are straight lines in this, in Lambert. And then you will write uh, all other rum lines, RLs, are concave if you remember that arc they are again concave to the pole so rum lines are concave to the pole simple right and let's talk about Mercator. marketers will always give me straight lines everywhere So the marketer has a lot of advantages, but then it is highly unrealistic on a lot of factors also. Okay, remember these points. Let's write down about great circle. What about great circle? What do we know about great circle? Let's start with marketer. My great circles. What is the importance of my great circle students? All my ATS routes are my great circle tracks only. Great circle importance is the shortest distance between the two points. If it's a shorter arc of a great circle. We know, do we remember the northern hemisphere travel and southern hemisphere travel distances increasing and decreasing? Students, very important factor talking about general navigation. Good. Write down. 
with respect to great circles the equator which is a great circle and meridians along with their anti meridians which are great circles so equator and meridians they are straight lines okay all other great circles gcs are curved with your track near to the pole or you can write down it is concave to the equator now this is just like all the examples that we have solved doing rum line and great circle tracks isn't it true students think about it it's true concave to the equator yes it's towards the poles it's curved what about the lambert's conical chart let's write down meridians as great circle are straight lines okay then great circles near uh you will write wait at the parallel of origin if you have any great circle near to your parallel of origin for this conical projection then those great circles would be near straight lines okay and at any other parallel okay any other parallel of latitude your great circles are a curve line concave to the parallel of origin three different aspects to this all your meridians are straight lines but your parallel of origin great circle near your parallel of origin are near straight lines and anything apart from your parallel of origin like not your standard parallel other parallels it will be curved and it will always be concave to the boss boss parallel from where the projection is referred to maximum simple everything you can make out by looking at the basic diagrams which we'll see again i would advise you all to look at the diagram and look at the table then it will be very easy if you remember the picture you can bring all these descriptions most of them of course secant and all is not that obvious if you are not good if you have not done thorough uh, trigonometry and apart from the uh, apart from this talk about polar interestingly for your polar region the great circles will always curve concave to the pole okay with curvature lesser than rumb line curvature so if you compare a rumb line curvature it will be a lesser curve 
so you can compare between the two the great circle great circle on this polar chart would be less curved compared to the rumb line on the polar chart that's how you can make the difference out of it lesser than the rumb line curvature in the same hemisphere okay at latitudes above 70 degrees okay gc can be considered as straight lines remember they are less curved than rumb lines but we can consider them to be a straight line above 70 degrees Two more points left in the table and the table is done. So we have seen scale, orthomorphism, graticule, drum lines and great circles. Let's talk about whether we have any convergency in the charts. And then last point, how are the shapes? Are the shapes realistic or not? Okay, convergency. What do you think about convergency? Let's see if your general knowledge or your memory kicks in. Which chart should we do first, convergency? So um sankal what do you think is the convergency for polar is there convergency or not yes or no try to remember the picture you have seen for polar subhajit conical is there convergency or not vivek yes sir vivek, is there convergency on mercator or not subhajit is saying yes sankal is saying yes vivek dagran and vivek yadav mercator do you see any convergency Yes or no? Vivek, your voice is not coming. Sir, for marketer? Yeah, for marketer. No, sir. No convergence. Convergency means the meridians converging a higher latitudes. Vivek, are you saying yes or no? Sorry. The answer to Sankalp and Subhujit is yes. And marketer, I don't think there is any convergence in marketer. Because all lines are straight, nothing. There's no convergence. Convergence is what parallels converging. That's it. Let's see. We'll figure it out. Convergency, or we'll call it chart convergency. So let's talk about polar chart convergency. The convergence value on the chart for polar stereographic is correct at the poles okay the convergence is further constant along the chart all right and the formula for convergence is change of longitude what is the basic formula for convergency that we are following students remind me so was it sir d long into sign of latitude d long into sign of mean lat or lat okay vivek dagar is it correct Yes, sir. Sankal? Yes, sir. Here in this, they have given us a number, convergence change of longitude. And they have given us n is equal to 1. And they have told us this figure, okay? Convergence is equal to, convergence factor is equal to 1. same points if i have to talk about lamberts to make any sense whether i understand this from the table or not for lambert this the chart convergence is constant along the chart so no problems there and uh, my formula for chart convergence is simple 
the formula write down change of longitude or your d long into sine of parallel of origin that is d long into sine of lat origin so the good thing about polar stereographic is that d long will give you your convergence that's it no sign no nothing is mentioned convergent factor is only one okay and talking about mercator any guesses wild guess if you had to make you already know d long is zero because zero oh zero yes good job zero everywhere because no convergence i was about to confuse but subhajit gave answers i was about to confuse you it's okay zero where exactly is zero on the actual earth equator so this zero convergence is only accurate on the equator you can say okay correct at the equator and is constant across the chart simple students these are all important points and they are highly logical highly logical and easy to understand but if we would have not referred to them then i would have not said it is easy to understand but now that we have referred to them they should be easy to understand last but not the least if we are talking about shapes of the actual land masses let's write down shapes let's start with mercator sir um yes sir yes ankur go ahead so i didn't get the meaning of uh, this uh, zero everywhere correct at equator and constant across the chart if you are saying zero then how it is correct what is the convergence on the equator for the earth ankur so zero that's what the statement is saying think about it okay sir it is correct as we as good as the chart as good as the real earth it is zero everywhere and isn't convergence zero on equator because all meridians are parallel to each other convergence is zero convergence is maximum what we can say the convergence value is basically the angular value between your two meridians if two meridians are 60 degrees apart so the convergence between them is 60 but on a mercator chart that is not an, that is not how it is because there is no convergence at all there is no one point north pole so zero but where on earth convergence zero exists or not yes on equator definitely it exists so this is the point it says it is correct at the equator and the same value zero is everywhere on the chart constant it means it is not changing got it good yes sir shapes the word used is reasonably reasonably correct shapes over small areas so smaller areas we get correct shapes and we get distortion it means exaggerated shapes distortion over large areas especially towards poles or high latitude what about lambert how are the shapes denoted in lambert mm.
about Lambert, in your textbook table, the shape is not mentioned, but uh, a definition of parallel of origin is given. So I'm going to give you so that, you know, it is not what exactly I was saying. I'm going to give it to you right now. Uh, what is it? Parallel of origin. Okay. What is parallel of origin? Write down. Parallel of origin. Assumed to be halfway between two standard parallels. Only when you are considering two standard parallels that the distance between the two halfway would be your parallel of origin. Like it is still that point of contact with the paper, I would say. If you only have one standard parallel, then that one standard parallel is your parallel of origin. Okay. If you're having two standard parallels, then it's halfway between. It's like a mean of the two. We will see if we find out the shapes and then we'll add it in the Lambert chart, the shape. And last, polar chart shapes. The shapes become distorted as you move away from homes. So this parallel of origin is only an extra point for your Lambert's chart. And this is only used for mathematical calculations, okay? Most of your conformal charts are made conformal using projection and mathematical like perspective and non-perspective. There are only few charts that are perspective. Which chart is a geometric chart? The point was given to you. What do you think is the answer? Which chart is a geometric chart? You have three charts. Now look at the table and we will again look at the pictures of these charts and see if you understand or not. Okay quickly if you have any other doubts. Let's talk about, and here only you will see the formula for scale. Please write down in the table the formula for scale, okay? Um, marketer scale, C. On a marketer chart, the scale expands away from the equator. The scale expansion is proportional to the second of latitude. And how to find it? Scale at any latitude, first you find out the scale at the equator and then multiply that latitude by sec. And sec also has a conversion factor. You can convert sec to be as one by cos like this. So this is another way you can solve it. So for example, if they are asking you if the scale of a Mercator chart at the equator, so the scale would be given to you. What is the scale at 60 degree naught? So what is the formula? Try to solve it students. Scale at any latitude, 60 is equal to scale at equator, which is one by 1000,000 is equal to sec 60. The sec 60, you can also get as one by cos 60. Okay, like this. So this is how you get the equation, sec 60. And 
it is easier if we write sec as one by cos. So you modify the formula because it becomes easier to multiply. One by cos 60, one by five, your answer you got so easy. Are you trying to solve students? Did you write down the formula? Write down the correct formula, write both the formulas with sec and with cosec uh, correction, one by cos both. So the formula would be scale at any latitude is equal to scale at equator into sec of that latitude or scale at equator into one by cos of that latitude. Did you write it clearly students? I am not writing it. Good job Vivek, correct answer. Write it in the table, the formula. Scale at any latitude, it's only for Mercator. Okay, it's only for Mercator. Now we are specifically doing it. Delta is the answer, correct. Do this one more. Let's see if you're getting it. Do this one. Uh, example two. Don't look at anything. If scale expands, the denominator decreases. Of course, a large scale will have a smaller denominator and a smaller scale will have a larger denominator. Remember that. So if scale expands, denominator decreases. This is the same. So I just didn't, didn't want you all to get confused. If the scale of a Mercator chart is 5, 2, at 52 degrees south is this. What is the scale at equator? The reverse calculation, students. See if you can pull it off. So, scale at equator is equal to, I would say scale at equator is equal to 1 upon cos of that latitude. Correct. So, just write down the formula. One by two thousand thousand is equal to x into one by cos fifty two, like that. You need to find out the x. It's like that. Then this multiplication goes division here. It would become reciprocal on the other side. Sankalp has given me the answer directly. Okay. How about Subhujit and Vivek? Options are there. Sankalp, did you cross check? Vivek Yadav, are you also following or not? Subhujit, yes, good. Looks correct. Like yours and Sankal's is same answer. I'm not sure if it's correct. I haven't checked yet. I'll check. Vivek Dhakar waiting for you quickly. Vivek Yadav waiting for you. Try. You have many options. Do some rough. Just mark some answer. Try to make it correct. No, yes. Vivek Dhakar waiting, waiting. A, B, C, D. Vivek Yadav has given me the answer. Matching with others, good. Sir, I got it in decimals. How to convert it in fraction? How are you getting in decimal? I think you have not set your scientific calcium function correctly. Mode. Because earlier also you were getting the same problem. You press this mode button and then press number one first. Computer function, COMP function, whatever number it requires. And then try to solve it. Okay. Rogers. What is the answer you are saying? Uh, 3.07 into 10 to the power minus 7. No, how, why are you getting that? Are you using normal calcium? You're not using scientific calcium. 
So he took it the other way. He took this uh, two zero zero for okay, his uncle. Can you walk Vivek through your steps? Vivek, follow what Sanjay is saying. Let's see. Uh, so just I'm also showing the screen calculation. Let's see, Vivek, you focus. Did you write it like this? Scale at 52 upon scale of equator into this. Now we have this value, one by two thousand thousand is equal to this was the x, and one upon cos of 52. Now where what happened now? What where did you go wrong? Is the equation over here? Did you get this fraction? Scalar equator is equal to cos 52 upon 2000,000, Vivek? Yes, sir, it's same. Same? Yeah. Now... So we have yeah. to take that uh, 200 on top and cos, uh, cos of 52 down, sir. Why, why? why is that step not shown here? Because we want it uh, in the representative fraction. That is one upon the answer. Exactly. How do we do that? How do we do that? So by taking uh, the... So uh, Ajit, you two, also chip in, okay? By taking the cost 52 down and that uh, 200 uh, on top. No. No, that's not how we do it. How do we bring it to RF? It's easy. Students, first find cos 52. Okay. What is cos 52? 0 0.615. Yes, no? 0 0.615. Yes, sir. So your numerator is 0 0.615. Denominator is 2000,000. How do we convert it into RF first? Making it one, how do we make it by one? Divide the numerator by numerator and divide the denominator also by numerator. Got it? This step to get RF. Sankar, what you're saying is your understanding, but how to get RF? We had learned, we had learned that. If you remember, Vivek, so see, easy. You are using a technique, Vivek, that is a complicated technique. You should avoid that and use the common technique. If you are struggling, please let me know before the exams because that can cost you a couple of marks if you make errors. And conversion of decimal to fraction, fraction of decimal, we should be actually thorough with it because we have a calcium. So how to do it? Of course, there are a couple of ways. But this is not something that can be confused because cos 52 is 0 0.615. So 0 0.615 divided by 0 0.615 will give me 1. And whatever you do to numerator, you will do to denominator. So 2000,000 divided by 0 0.615, what do you get? I get 3252032. Similar to the answers that you have, option A. Got it. 1 by 3, 2, 5, 2, 0, 3, 2. Got my scale. 1 by something, I got my scale. That's how I'm jumping at my answer. And what are the answers matching? Only option A is matching. So, Subhajit, so how were you solving it? How did you get the correct answer? What method did you use? Sir, till the point we got... 3.07 into 10 raised to minus 7. Then I divided 1. Uh, then I just uh, took 1 as the numerator and 1 divided by the decimal number which we got. We got that representative fraction. Yes. Students, remember, once you reach at this point in scale sums, you have to just convert it into 1. Just divide the numerator by the same and divide the denominator by numerator. You got. It. You don't need to get into all this. I can see why your answer because scientific calculus is giving me 3.075 into 10 raised to into 10. Actually, it's not raised to minus 7. It's a little confusing over here in the calculus also. 
into 10 is given to you actually. So you do into 10 into minus 6. So seven zeros after three, basically, like that. Got it, sir, by both ways. Remember this point. Remember RF, bringing it. Everyone is on the right track. You have your own ways, but it is easy. See, even they are saying you will get your answer as three, two, four, eight, five, three, eight, something. Here, they have given us a technique that don't divide the numerator by denominator. They have given us a technique to solve, make it easy. You can simply follow this technique also. Whatever denominator is, 2000,000, divide by the numerator. Cos 52. So I solved it in this way. Cos 52. Yeah. You get the same answer. Generally, we don't follow this. We think that we will get incorrect answer. But in this equation for this, because we have to convert it into RF, this comes as a correct answer. Only in this one-off scenario can we do the thing that is opposite to actual divisions. Not as true. So these are called thumb rules, couple of thumb rules. These. So remember these steps, easy, easy to solve. Okay, let's quickly look at the Mercator projection and see whether the rules are correct. See, there is no convergency. Convergency is zero. Everything is straight. And the spacing of the parallels is expanding as we move up. On the equator, it's correct. Okay. Um, remember, Subhujit, remember when we were making great circle and we were confused about two hemispheres? I told you, you can take a direct conversion, but then I had given you a diagram that looks like this. On the equator, you change your rule. So this is the most accurate way to follow. Follow. Okay, this one, and you see this also: London to Singapore to Auckland. So Singapore is considered here somewhere on the equator. So up to the equator, you follow the same protocol for northern hemisphere. After the equator, you follow the correct protocol for the southern hemisphere. Make sure you make this curve like this. You understood, right? We had made this also. This. Basically, um, see this one. When your two points, one is in the northern hemisphere, one is in the southern hemisphere, then this is the most accurate. Up to the point it crosses equator, the rum line and G great circle, they are true. They are true to the principles. After the point of equator in the southern hemisphere, they are true to the principles. And the same things are written here in theory, what we have done in that. See your Mercator projections. On the globe, it looks like this. On the chart, it's a little distorted. And see, on the equator, the scale, this much part is 3,000 nautical miles. But on the higher latitudes, this much part should be 3000 nautical miles because distance is reduced. The length of one degree reduces towards the higher latitudes. But in Mercator chart, it is showing more. It should be showing less. It's showing more. And in reality, Greenland, this part, is actually only of this size of Africa, blue. But this, this is exaggerated. And this part of Europe also. It has to be equal to this much part of India, but it is exaggerated. Anyway, quickly looking at, so I hope you have written down the formula, students. It's easy. It's not difficult. Um, whoever does not have this text, let me know. I'll share the entire textbooks with you all. You can just solve these textbook questions behind after solving this, okay? Do it once in your final revision or before sleeping tonight. Okay. Let's come quickly on the next chart. Okay. 
we have anything with respect to scale what is the theory behind the scale for this charge students somebody tell me from the uh, table quickly sir I'm, the scale is constant at standard parallels and it contracts in between the standard parallels and expands away from the standard of par standard parallels see the scale is now correct at these two points they are saying which are these two points lambert made the cone of his projection go inside the reduced earth these are now called standard parallels so he made the cone go inside and when the cone went inside okay the paper was meeting the reduced earth at two points instead of one tangent on 45 degree north so when we are keeping the paper up that was our standard parallel but when they are look at the difference between these two top diagrams this is on the earth we have one parallel of origin which is your standard parallel but generally when the cone is fed inside the earth passing through the reduced earth the parallel of origin is midway between these two origin these two standard parallels when wherever this paper is cutting inside the earth we get accuracy so this chart is better than this chart is what they are trying to say because we get more accuracy at vivid places compared to this so now you know a little bit more about your conical projection that the paper is cutting through the side of the earth like this and going inside that's why two points we are getting and thus the midpoint between the two a half way is your parallel of origin and these two are your standard parallels got it students a little bit more depth both definitions are correct okay for two also when paper is passing when paper is up then one earlier both parallel of origin and standard parallel were 45 degree north right now a parallel of origin is 45 degree north but standard parallels are changing that's it scale is expanded scale is contracted outside this the scale is expanded within this the scale is contracted yellow part they are talking about so what does it mean this much point within our parallel of origin standard parallel scale is good small and here outside our standard parallels these yellow lines the scale is expanded a uh, term 16 rule is there with your lambert's conformal chart see in this chart the blue and the blue 47 degree north let me zoom in Forty-seven degree north standard parallel S and forty-three degree north standard parallel S. Halfway between forty-five is your parallel of origin. Okay. As you move towards the parallel of origin, the scale is least, but within the standard parallels, the scale is contracting, contracting towards the parallel of origin, and outside the scale is expanding slowly. Do you understand this, students? Easy diagram. Scale is contracting here and is the least. make sure lambert projection is a non perspective projection please add is it perspective non perspective it's a non perspective we have brought the cone inside the reduced earth for that we had to make mathematical adjustments to make it orthomorphic and thus it becomes non perspective afterwards meridians they converge but the parallels they are curved when you put together 
the meridians and parallels they actually cut each other at 90 degrees so this is an added point then further see this is the graticule arcs basically parallel of origin between two standard parallels The parallel of origin is the mathematic basis of projection. It defines the chart convergence. It is halfway between two standard parallels. The sign of parallel of origin. So the sign word is there. Have we added the sign word in our table? Check. One of the tables doesn't have that. The sign of parallel of origin is called the constant of the cone and is denoted by n, the factor that we spoke about in the table. sign parallel of origin yes written down everything is same you might be thinking oh there are extra things extra things it's the same see great circles are showing just great circles chart convergence is fine see slightly curved the parallel of origin is straight and then the other is slightly curved. Correct. So this is the table that we made. So we have covered these parts. It's clearly written all these are asked in examinations and should be learned. Okay. And let's look at the last chart. This is again they are talking about sign mean lag and everything sign parallel of the half change lag convergence and convergency angle remember that okay difference between the rum line and the great circle is the convergency angle not the convergency remember that just basic channel navigation and all this in depth is fine do you think a flight dispatcher preparing must be getting these topics more than the topics for cpl because books are the same disadvantages of lambert's chart flying by compass gives rum line tracks so if great circle tracks are to be flown the aircraft must have a system which gives automatic computation of desired track The graticule is not rectangular and plotting position is not as simple as Mercator. And NDB position lies have to be plotted using meridian transfer. So these are the complications. See students, even though you are, you are not required to study all these things, they are a part and eventually I would suggest once you clear your CPL exams and when you're free, keep reading. Okay? That's what textbooks are good to read. We are talking about the last polar chart, polar stereographic. What's the definition for polar stereographic? See, polar stereographic is the only geometric projection that is true perspective projection. Remember that geometric polar stereographic, the only one that is true perspective. See, to determine, we need to introduce the concept of co latitude. What is co latitude? Co latitude is simply 90 minus the latitude. Therefore, if the latitude is 60, then the co latitude will be 30. Like 90 minus 60, 30. So remember this point, it is a uh, trivia. Not many people will know this unless read it. What is co latitude? Co latitude is minus by. So if I give you an equation and say find out something at 75 degree north, if it's a polar chart and if you have to find out pole latitude, so pole latitude would be 90 minus 75, that would be 15. Where do we use pole latitude? Here. So now you know what is pole latitude. So if somebody is asking me about the scale at 50 degree north, then my pole latitude would be how much? Sankal? 
If I'm asking about an equation or something with respect to 50 degree naught, what will be the total attitude you will use in the formula for scale expansion? Uh, 40. 40. 90 minus 50 will be 40. This is something extra trivia we have to remember. Okay. Scale expands away from the pole at a rate. This is the rate for the scale. Scale at any latitude. Write down this formula for scale for polar charts. And please make a solution also. This, this is your last. Here they are saying it is not a part of your EASA exam, so probably it will not be a part of our exams also. But just solve it once because scale for Mercator, scale for other charts have come in the past. So if I want to find out the scale at the pole is this, what is the scale at 78 degree north? The so scale at 78 degree north is scale at pole. Opposite to Mercator. Mercator, we were comparing it with scale of the equator into sec or 1 by cosine. Here it is sec square. Remember, into sec square multiplied by half pole attitude. It's such a complicated situation. So, scale at 70 is 1 by 1000,000 into I got my pole attitude as. 12 degrees and half of 12 is 6, sec square 6. And this is a trigonometric formula, which I would suggest you directly add in your equation in your scientific calci. First, 1 divided by 1000, 1000 multiplied by, I'm opening up a bracket. Students try to do this if you are able to solve. So this is an easier function. It's x squared, that's why they have multiplied twice. Okay, don't be confused. Because in your scientific calcium, sec is not there. We can take one upon cos cos six. So what is cos six? 0 0.999. So one upon 0 0.99 into 1 upon 0 0.99. See, it's there. The value would be same into 1. So, into this, we get this as your answer. The scale is within 1% of the scale at the pole. Why? Because I think up to how much? Up to 78 is 1%, and 70, 78 to 70 is 3%, right? Yeah, see this. Vivek Subhajit, I understand you feel saturated, but give me an acknowledgement. Are we thorough with this? How to solve this formula? Is it okay, Sankal? Yes, Vivek sir. Subhajit. I sent you the answer. Sir. Yeah, Vivek Yadav. Easy, right? It's not difficult. Sankal Subhajit, you have sent me the answers. Good job. Vivek, you didn't try? Tired? No, sir. I tried. It's almost the same. Almost same. Nine eight, nine, nine. And here it is nine eight nine. No, that nine nine is for one fraction. Now you have to make a square of it. The answer can change. One upon zero point nine nine into one upon zero point nine nine. So when I just put square, I get 0 0.9 or 8, 9 or 0 only. They are getting the right answer. We will also get the right answer if we solve it. Now with respect to projection students, you have covered even the most critical aspects that are there. Okay. So just revise it once. And all these points are there in the table. The chart convergence is always equal to the change of longitude between two points whatever the latitude. It's the same statement in a different way. Okay. 
drum lines, great circles, descriptions are there nicely. So all these points that are there are there in the table. So the table it makes it much more easier to remember. Okay. So students, uh, because you had no basic training on charts that this much time we had to spend on charts, although we tried to rush, I understand it's been what four hours, five hours, but it's good. Uh, from tomorrow onwards, uh, whatever topics we are going to cover, our basics are already strong for those topics. So we can do a little more faster studies there. When it comes to gyro, um, I'll explain in short for gyro so that we don't have to spend more time. Okay. Until then study, please do not stress out. Believe, believe your memory, the focus that you have put in your classroom. Don't just put everything upon how much you were able to revise before the exams in case you are lacking. Okay. Also remember you have been studying since such a long time. What will that come to use? How can you bring that to your use? Just, just go through it and just have this faith or trust in you that in the time of my performance, I'll be able to recall what I had learned. Simple as that. And remember the answers are always there in front of you. Minimum three options will be there, maximum four. If three are there, good, four there, it becomes still good. Three are much better because only two are wrong and one is right. Like this. Correct? I was trying to create a joke, but I realized public is going to see. If you would have been only in the class, you would have had a good joke right now. So, that being said, please don't stress out. Take it easy. Be confident is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Don't doubt yourself. You have given the you have given in the hard work. You will get the food. Stress me on that. Every day we'll study. If you are don't fall sick, that's why I'm saying sleep enough. Otherwise, even the final revision will not be able to do. And tomorrow also, let's keep a time for eleven only. Tomorrow, I am thinking that. 10 would be too much of rest for you all. I'm not sure, but I'm thinking 11 is a safe time. You can do morning studies also, or you can do late night studies and wake up also, and then come to the class also. Whatever works. Okay. And I'll see you tomorrow. And until then, just keep spamming me with your doubts and whatever you have on WhatsApp. You all are on my priority. And Vivek Yadav Likit, learn as much as you can. It's good for you. But when your time comes for the exams, you'll be getting the same priority, okay? So don't feel bad thinking, sir, I have not asked you Please don't feel bad. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy. All the best students. Thank you, sir.